Well, this is the regular meeting of the Brockton Planning Board. This is January the 5th, 2021 at 6.03 p.m. And I'm about to read the customary prepared statement as follows. I am calling this January the 5th, 2021 meeting of the Brockton Planning Board to order. My name is Bob Pelagi and I'm the chair of the board. This meeting is being recorded. In accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A, Section 20 relating to the 2020 um, novel coronavirus outbreak emergency, the January the 5th, 2021 public meeting of the Brockton Planning Board shall be physically closed to public access to avoid group congregation. Real time public participation and comment can be addressed to the Planning Board utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. This application will allow users to view the meeting and send a comment or question to the chair via the question and answer function. Submitted text comments will be read into the record uh, at the appropriate points in the meeting. For those of you joining us by phone who want to ask a question, press star nine to raise your hand. A copy of the recording and transcript will be posted to the city's webpage within 72 hours. All votes will be done via roll call to ensure count accuracy. A forum call, uh, board members, please respond in the affirmative to indicate your attendance at the meeting. Larry Hassan. Here. Tony Gonzalez. Here. Reggie Thomas. Here. Bob, uh, Bob Pelagi is here and Craig Pina. Here. Thank you. Uh, with five members voting in the affirmative, I declare we have a quorum. All right, moving along our agenda this evening. Uh, Mr. Chair, while yes. you're getting that ready, I would like to remind the folks who are joining us via Zoom or online um, that uh, when a case comes up, you as the chair will announce that case. Uh, we're asking people who are associated with that case, uh, presenting that case to raise their hand uh, electronically. If you scroll to the bottom of your Zoom screen, you'll see uh, a little icon that lets you raise your hand. We will then bring you on to the panelist side of the presentation, and that will allow you then to unlock your microphones and turn on your cameras. Uh, when we get into the testimony section of a, of a case, we also will ask uh, for people who are attendees to raise their hands and we will unlock uh, your microphones at that point in time where you can give us your name, address, and then provide us with your testimony. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. You may you. proceed. All right, so for this evening's meeting, uh, administratively, we've got acceptance of minutes, uh, endorsement of A&R plans, subdivision plans, and all lot releases. And uh, we have a uh, request for a site plan extension for neighborhood uh, works. Let's see, it's, it's, it's neighbor Neighbor Works Housing Solutions at 70 High Street. And then getting into uh, hearings, we have a total of, I guess, eight agenda items, and they are as follows. Commissioner returned to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Our property is at 68 to 70 Field Street. The denial was uh, July the 14th, 2020. Applicant is Marie Floquette. Attorney John Creedon is the representative. Second item is a definitive subdivision property at map 37, plot 4, 6, and 18 Augusta Avenue on plot 36 Prospect Street. It's an 18 lot residential subdivision. Frederick Hebshi is the owner and Curly and Hanson representatives. That meeting, or that hearing, I should say, is continued to February the 2nd, 2021. Mr. Chair? Yes. First item has also been continued to February 2nd. Item three? Item one. Item, item one. Oh, I didn't realize that. Thank you. So item one that I read just read previously has been continued to February 2nd. Second. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Agenda item three is a preliminary subdivision of properties. It's a map 74 plots, 18 market and one minus four Coping Street. It's a two lot residential subdivision. The owner is John Torches. Of Trutches, I think it is, pardon me. Land surveys is the representative. Uh, item four, preliminary subdivision, 
property is at 42 Quincy Street. It's a five lot residential subdivision. Owner is Springfield Ventures Realty Trust. Five is a definitive subdivision property at 53 Cypress Drive and 300 Rockland Street, it looks like. A five lot residential subdivision. Representative is ET Engineering. Six is a site plan approval amendment, a retail marijuana, 747 Center Street. Representative is uh, Patrick K. Sullivan Esquire. Uh, number seven is site plan approval, retail marijuana properties at 156 Main Street. Representative is James A. Valeriani Esquire. Uh, it's the, and the applicant is the Mensing Group. Well, he's part of the Mensing Group, I think it is. I guess I'm confusing the two. And the eighth and final item is site plan approval, retail marijuana properties at 165 Westgate Drive. Representative Scott Ferry of J.K. Home and Engineering. So, Pam, do we have, uh, let's see, has everybody had an opportunity to read uh, the minutes from the last meeting? And if so, are there any comments, suggestions, corrections? Motion will approve the minutes as presented. A second? Second. I'll second that motion. Okay, we've got plenty of seconds. So pick I one. did. I took the first one. All right, good. So, uh, the vote on the roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Reggie Thomas? Yes. Greg Pina? Yes. Papalaji is a yes. And then uh, do we have any, I know we have, uh, I think you have one uh, a and plan. There's one a and and a request for an extension. Okay, you don't have a, you don't have any subdivisions or lot releases though, right? Nothing. Okay, so on the matter of the, um, let's see, the, the uh, planning department had handed out a, uh, a directive on the on the matter of the one on uh, and what is the address of the of the of the uh, it is the A and R plan ninety three pleasant what was the address on the on the A and R plan uh, Pam please ninety three pleasant. Oh, is it 93 Pleasant? I'm sorry. Okay, and uh, so 93 Pleasant Street. And um, do we have do we have a representative on 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 the line or not, Rob? Um, do we have anyone here representing 93 Pleasant Street? If so, please raise your hand. I don't see anyone. Okay, so I think all the departments get. I mean, all the board members got a directive sometime during the day today. The planning department has informed us that they are that this that this had a prior history of, of a zoning relief and um, and as such the the properties that they want to intermingle are, are under um, the conditions of a prior zoning decision therefore they would have to go back before the zoning board of appeals prior to attempting to revise this through an a and r am i stating that correctly uh, yes, sir. That is our concern. Okay, so we can um, now. The time clock runs. What do we got there for time, Pam? You do not have time because, you, as you know, an AM <laughs> after um, twenty-one days. That's it. Well, when when did we get it? Um, your twenty-one days will expire before the next meeting. So I mean, are you, so we, that it was submitted. So there isn't, in other words, there isn't time to ask the applicant for a continuance. So we, we have no option but to, to, to deny it. It is not, yeah. I don't believe you have that option. Okay. All right, fine. Thank you. I won't belabor it. Uh, would someone like to make a motion? I mean, you hear it. Uh, any other discussion on the matter? What Anybody, are our options here? Questions? I'm sorry? What are our options here? Well, you, you, it's a block and an A and R. If we don't act in an A and R, then it becomes an administrative approval. So, in other words, if we don't act as a board and we don't act on it tonight, and we and we push it aside, the time clock runs on an A and R. You've got how many days? I'm sorry, Pam. How many days do we have from the date of filing with the city? You court? have 21 days from 21 the day days. it was filed. It becomes automatically approved. Which it we was don't filed act. on the. It was filed on the 22nd of December. 
All right, and, and I, I just asked the question, was there time to ask the applicant for to submit an, a, a continuance or, or to submit a some sort of a, a, to give us to extend the time clock and, and, and Pam said no. And the applicant is not with us right now. Apparently no. not, nope. He can resubmit it. You'll have to, you'll have to do, you know, prepare, not just, in other words, pay another fee and, and file, and file the, the, that's what I was trying to avoid that, but. Correct, but. But we have no opportunity to Mr. ask yeah. any questions right now. Yeah. I'm sorry to say that again, Craig. We have no opportunity to ask the applicant any questions right now. No, unfortunately not. We don't have, we don't, so it doesn't give us a lot of options, unfortunately. So with, with, with the knowledge that, Inaction requires them to refile. I would uh, motion to continue. I second that. You can't continue it. Yeah, but you it, can't. It, it, well, they just have to refile. So do we have to deny it? You have yeah, to sure. deny it. We you have, have to, to approve it or deny it. Those are your only two. I don't two think we have enough information to approve it. So, in other words, if the applicant was on the first question I asked Rob was, was a representative on the line with us? If there was a representative and he agreed to extend the time clock, then we would have given them an extension. But there's nobody there to give that authorization. So if we And nobody them, usually does for an ANR. They, they just submit them and that's it. If we let the time clock run, then, then we're giving them an we're giving them an approval, an administrative approval that we don't want to do. So if, if someone would like to make a motion in the affirmative. Motion approved. Motion approved with the hopes that it does not Correct. Not right. Correct. Correct. Oh, are we doing that again? Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to. As Dick, as Dick Wayne Why are we doing that again? <laughs> because you don't. Because you don't approve. We, we don't need to get into it now. But you don't. If someone denies a, a negative, a negative motion, it becomes a positive motion. You don't. You don't. You don't. You don't, you don't make. <clears throat> That's okay. Negative. I got it. Right. I'll, I'll second correct the motion. Got it. Go ahead and then a motion. Yeah, correct. I'll, I'll motion. second that motion. Approve. Okay. Um, on a roll call vote. Motions are made made to approve in a second. Uh, Larry Mr. and Mr. Chair, could you explain the vote though? That if they so to deny it, it needs a. You're going to have to refile, correct? Right, but it would. If a yes we vote, are... it still approves it, and a no vote, right? So yes. we are asking the board to vote no. Yes, vote no. It's a Correct. motion to deny in hopes that it does not prevail. It's a motion to approve. To approve. To, to approve. Yes. I'm sorry. There so we you go. vote. <laughs> motion. Yeah. Are we good now? Yeah. Larry has Doing good. So we're denying. So no. That's correct. Good. No. Tony Gonzalez. No. Reggie Thomas. No. Craig Pina. No. Bob Pelagi is a no. It does not pass. Dick Wainwright just thank you. Oh. <laughs> Dick Wainwright, thank you from the grave. It was nice. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, I'll explain it in detail if you would like, but he is correct. He won this before the Zoning Board of Appeals historically a couple of times. You don't make negative motions in the negative. Um, okay. All right. Um, I just moved. Oh, you did that. Okay. I did that. Okay. So the next, yeah. the next <clears throat> uh, request for extension, um, request for extension for um, 70 Highland Street, uh, neighborhood, neighbor works housing solutions. Is there a representative on that? Yes, she is in the room. Yep. Can can everyone hear me? Yes. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. How are you? Good. Could you identify yourself, please? Yes. Noelle Humphreys. I'm the Associate Real Estate Director from NeighborWorks Housing Solutions. All right. Thank you. Good evening. Sure. Good evening. And just maybe, maybe just a brief presentation. I, I see we're all we're all in possession of your cover letter there, but um, if you wanted to make just the most the brief statement, that would be that would be uh, acceptable. 
Sure, no problem. So um, we are in the process of redeveloping the old Lincoln School at 70 Highland Street in Brockton. Um, so part of our financing efforts involve the low income tax credit um, and some state soft monies. We submitted an application to the state last February for those credits. And um, as is pretty customary with the state, they usually require a couple rounds of submission before they'll approve your award. So um, we were asked to come back in in this round, received really positive feedback from the Department of Community, the Department of Housing and Community Development. Um, so we are submitting a new application this month um, with an expectation that we'll be awarded tax credits in the summer, probably June, which is the standard, if not a little earlier. And with that in mind, we've gone ahead and requested an 18 month extension of our site plan approval um, the approval was set to expire this month, although with the state of emergency provision, um, there is that allowance that I think as of like March 2019, it was on hold as is. Um, so it sort of brought us some extra months anyways, but just to be cautious, we thought it would be prudent to request an 18 month extension to get us through to construction completion in 2022. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a question, two questions, Rob. With the well, the, the the freeze is still in the freeze is still in uh, in in effect right now, correct, Rob? Um, we believe that the freeze has been uh, lifted now that we uh, because we are actually hearing hearing cases, um, and and so we're we're um, erring on the side of caution by yeah. um, you know just. Uh, uh, approving this extension. Uh, we also want to make it note that, known that uh, the department is continuing to work with uh, neighbor work, works on their um, historic uh, tax credit application. And uh, they continue, there's another round of historic tax credits that they have just applied for. Okay, great. So just to be clear, not and not just, I mean, it, it's going to affect anything we do in addition to this. That that freeze, the freeze that the legislature put in place has been lifted. Uh, that is most people's interpretation. Yes. Okay. And then the second question I've got is: It customary when we do an extension on the site plan to give eighteen months? Uh, we can give anywhere up to. Uh, we have yeah. given extensions up to two years in the past, so eighteen months should not. Uh, be unusual. Very good. Thank you. That's all I had. Board members, do you have any questions, concerns? I'd like to, I mean, is there a, an issue with us erring on the side of caution and giving them a, a two year extension as opposed to 18 months? I don't remember giving an 18 month extension. We've given a year and two years. I don't remember giving 18 months. That would be wonderful. <laughs> You know, our plan is obviously to finish by 2023, but um, I was, it is kind of cutting it close. So two years would be ideal. Miss, Miss Humphreys, for just for, I'm, I'm sorry, if you would, have you made any, have you made any progress there? Have you done any physical construction at all? We have, we can't start our construction until we're awarded the state credits. Oh, got it. Okay, um, so, thank but you. But we do have, you know, we're at 70% plans right now. Um, <clears throat> we're proceeding to move those forward. Um, we've made a lot of progress, as, as Rob mentioned, on the historic credits, because um, those require going in multiple rounds to the Mass Historic Commission. And, um, but we will begin, the plan would be, if we are awarded credits um, by June, we would proceed to a financial closing on the property and acquisition from the city by the end of the year, beginning construction the start of 2022. Very good. Thank you. Uh, well, and they have... They have made some physical improvements to the building to make sure that it remains uh, weather tight. Uh, to maintain and for maintenance. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, in an abundance of caution, I would like to propose uh, a motion for an eight for a two-year extension. Wonderful. Is there a second? I second. Well, I, I don't think anybody's got any problem with that. Do the, nope. do the other board members? No. Fine. Is there a second? No. Second. Okay. Very good. Uh, let's see. A vote on the roll call. Uh, Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Reggie Thomas? Yes. Greg Pina? Yes. And Bob Pelagi is a yes. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. You have a good evening. Thank you. You as well. All right. So now we move on to, so let's see, item one has been continued. Item two is continued. So the next order of business would be item of a three preliminary subdivision property at uh, map 74 plot 18 market in one minus four Copeland. So two lot residential subdivision. Um, the owner is one uh, Troches land surveys is the representative. Pam has made some attempts to reach out to attorney um, Mike, uh, John, John McCluskey and has heard nothing. Um, this is the one where it's on the, they keep extending the end of the dead end street opposite the South Junior High School. We requested uh, some proposals there or some, some more information to show some turnaround because we now we run into this problem where you get, you're extending dead end streets and we have nothing. So what's the board's pleasure on this? It's kind of hanging around. Um. Mr. Chair, you are going to need to take action on this. This was a preliminary and your time is frozen <clears throat> until now. And you only okay, have right. a short window. Okay, so is there right. any representatives here for the- There are the not, they were, uh, they were aware that it was scheduled for tonight. Well, I'm, I'm sure of that. I just didn't know if anybody was online, so. Okay, Larry, I, I'll wait for you to make the motion. I, I you know, Unfortunately, or for, I mean, based on what we have or don't have for information, we have to deny the preliminary subdivision plan for property map 74 plots 18 Market Street and 1-4 Copeland Street. Make a motion to second. But you're, you're making a motion to approve, I hope. Yeah. Make a motion to approve with the, with the hope that it's not, denied. Not prevail. Right. Yeah, will not prevail. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, uh, there's been a motion made and seconded. Larry Hassan? Yes. No. Well, no. no. Yeah, we're going, okay, we're going that way again. No. <laughs> Tony Gonzalez? No. Reggie Thomas? No. Craig Pina? No. Bob Pelagi is a no. So it, 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 it does not pass. Uh, okay. The next item is a preliminary subdivision. Properties at 42 Quincy Street. It's a five lot residential subdivision. Owner representative of Springfield Ventures Realty Trust. Uh, let's see. Did you move them? Oh. I see hands up. Yeah, I'm moving one. I don't know who TJ is. Uh, that's Scott Barrier. I don't know who TJ is. We should have attorney Nezrella somewhere there, Pam. Do you know who this Phil Nezrella guy is? I've heard of him. Is TJ on your team also? Who is TJ? I don't know. It might be a TJ. We're going to hold on to you until um, it comes time to take testimony, and then we will um, allow you to speak. All right. I think everybody. I think we're still waiting for Phil, Pam. I thought I moved him. I thought I, he popped up, but unless he's not there. I think Phil was talking. I think he, he needs to unmute. He's, he's there. Okay. He's got to unmute himself and put his camera on. We would ask that all panelists unmute themselves and <laughs> uh, turn on their cameras because for the record. Sure. He still hasn't done it. Scott, is he making your presentation? You know, he's smarter than I am. I would prefer him to do it, but if he's, uh, I'm sure he'll jump in at some point.
I can certainly get started if you want, guys. You can, please, Scott, if you don't mind, yep. All right. Uh, well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members of the board, we have a uh, preliminary subdivision plan at 42 Quincy Street uh, for your review tonight. Uh, excuse uh, me, Scott. Just, yes. I think I found the unmute button. Very good. Jump in, Phil. All right. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, if, if you don't mind, I'll just make a couple of introductory remarks. Michael, um, let me start the video here. So in any, in any event, uh, the property of 42 uh, North Cary, uh, Quincy Street, this is an ambitious five lot subdivision. When I say ambitious, I mean, it is what I believe for the appreciation of not only that particular area, but all of the surrounding area. Uh, these lots are uh, ambitious in the sense that they are not of small lot sizes. They go from 59,000 square feet to an average of around 39,000 square feet. Most of them are over an acre. The smallest ones are 15,000 square feet, which is somewhat larger than a lot of the other lots in R1C zones in Brockton. So the, uh, the purpose here and the intent was to take this parcel of land and to create almost what one would call like an estate lot where you have a beautiful home on a large lot uh, as you come down a driveway off of the street. Now, there aren't a lot of those in the city of Brockton because we've never designed a zoning ordinance to allow them. But this parcel would be right for that type of a project. And it also has the approval, the endorsement in the cooperation with the neighbors to the left and the right, who also look forward to this type of a project, which they believe will not only uh, enhance their property, appreciate their values, but beautify what right now is some uh, uh, broken down properties in a, in a uh, largely wooded lot. Now, I had re reviewed the uh, City of Brockton's planning board staff report. And quite frankly, I understand and, and, and don't uh, rail against it. I think some of the points are valid and they are in fact true. Uh, I disagree with the conclusion that because they are non conforming, we deny this. Well, historically, most of the properties that come before the city are non-conforming, and that's the whole purpose of these boards, whether it be planning boards, zoning, conservation, etc. If we were simply going to allow the progress and development of conforming lots, we wouldn't need any boards. We'd have like a vending machine pop in the issue and it would pop out the answer. Here you always have in Brockton, how do you put a square peg in a round hole? And it depends upon how orderly you develop it and what the design layout and plan is. If we, we've addressed traffic, if we addressed uh, lot size and setback requirements, et cetera. Uh, I also don't know if I disagree with Mr. Newton's uh, analysis about the fact that you can't be under 50 foot frontage. We have a couple of lots that are about 45 feet in frontage. If that was the issue and the board has concern about that, we have several other lots with a hundred foot frontage we could shave off five feet on those lots, put five feet on the 45 foot lot, and we would be in compliance. Uh, I think this, this plan brings a lot of positivity to that particular area. Uh, it's, a, it's a street that has uh, several lots that have been undeveloped throughout the city. And the fact that these do not conform does not surprise me in the sense that we're dealing with a zoning ordinance that's uh, in zoning books that are 54 years old. The last adjustment we had on zoning ordinances comprehensively was 1967, three years after John F. Kennedy was shot. So uh, it's very difficult for us, other than taking a case-by-case -case analysis of how we make a development appreciative and beneficial, not only to the landowner, but to the city. I think this particular project balances both of those. Scott Farrier can address the details of it. I'd like to make some comments after, but I would like the board's mind to look at this in the sense that this is what boards do. We, we work to make adjustments. And in this particular project, not only after it comes out of the planning board, it goes to the zoning board for another set of scrutiny. And uh, I think we all know, including Mr. Pina, what the burdens and uh, challenges are before a zoning board. So this will be filtered and graded 
but it should be, um, I think, closely looked at because I think it's a very positive uh, plan that we have for the city for, for this particular parcel. And I think it's only gonna benefit all of the neighbors around. In fact, my understanding is that some of the neighbors that have already developed there or would like to develop are completely in favor of this. Uh, would those comments, uh, Mr. Faria, if you'd like to go into the engineering aspect. Oh, thanks, Phil. Uh, as Attorney Nazarella said, it's, we're looking to divide the property. The, the subject property has four acres of land. Uh, so we're looking to divide those four acres into the five lots. Lot one uh, consists of kind of a large existing home with two barn type structures, uh, older structures on the property that uh, are a little bit different. They have different levels, some dry, some garage doors underneath old fashioned barn doors that we're looking to preserve, uh, which is why lot number one has the most acreage of all the lots. So that one has about 1.4 acres. And again, it's just to provide the owners of lot one, the access and use of the two existing bonds on the property. Uh, lots two and five, as we said, have a hundred feet of frontage and 150 feet deep. Uh, we're showing a, uh, a typical 28 by 40 colonial type dwelling with a garage under. It meets all of the zoning setback requirements. So even though the lot does all, is undersized under the zoning bylaw, it still meets the, uh, the setback requirements. Excuse me, Scott, can you share the site plan, please? Oh man, you're pushing your luck, Rob. Uh, <laughs> I can try. Just people are watching at home and elsewhere. Yeah. I just had a question. Oh, good. Asking, uh, somebody just sent in an email asking where they could find it. So I'm sending them to the public drive on our website. All right. Scott. Yes. I mean, if, if you do it electronically, you're, you're one up on me. See, this is how I would share the plan. Just hold it. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what I'm thinking of. But I, I think I can handle this, Mr. Palagi. I think I can. I don't have my... Uh, my normal technical help at home. So I'm kind of winging this on my own, but I think I can do it. I think you can too. All right, there we go. So, fortunately I don't see you guys. Do we see that plan, Rob? Uh, no, we do not. All right, here we go. All right, share screen. Here we go. Okay. Everybody have it now? Yeah. Yes, we do now. Okay, great. Sorry for that. All right, so lot one, uh, as I said, has the existing barn and dwelling on it. Uh, we're looking to keep that uh, intact for the future owners of lot one. Uh, lots two and five, uh, the 100 feet by 150 feet, they have a 28 by 30, uh, 28 by 40 foot colonial type dwelling on it with a garage under meeting all the setback requirements. Lots three and four are the, the tricky ones. Uh, as Attorney Nazarella said, they're larger lots. We're looking to put the houses way in the back. Uh, in order to do that, we basically create what you would call in other cities and towns around an estate lot where we have reduced frontage. Uh, in this instance, 45 and 45 feet, but we have a, uh, a large area. We have one acre for lot four, 0.9 acres for lot three. So it's kind of, again, under most zoning, it's kind of a trade-off. You get reduced frontage and added area. Uh, those homes as well, uh, kind of large colonials with attached garages. So what we end up with are four new driveways heading out to Quincy Street. Each of the driveways will have a turnaround, so nobody will have to back out onto Quincy. Everybody will have the ability to, to drive out nose first onto Quincy Street. Uh, there's available water and sewer for each of the five homes. Uh, again, the engineering department had some questions about the, the length of sewer and the, uh, the need for a sewer manhole, and we can certainly meet that requirement as we get uh, further down the road. But as you guys know, this is kind of just the first step. We need preliminary subdivision approval in order to get to the ZBA and see if ultimately they will grant the waivers uh, that we're requesting for, for lot frontage and lot area on lots two and five. So uh, if we get your preliminary approval, we go to ZBA for their ultimate approval of the lot size. Then as you know, we come back before you for definitive approval where we can hash out all of those uh, utility issues and, and uh, whatever issues uh, need to be resolved on, on Quincy Street.
Thank so you. I think that is a, uh, a rundown of the project, Mr. Chairman, if there's any questions. All right. Uh, I'll, I don't know if the board wants me to keep that. If you want to keep that up, you might as well keep it up. Does, do any of the other, do any of the board members have any comment? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not unmuted. Um, I do have a comment. Um, you know, it, I, I'd just like to let everyone know that it, as, a, as, a, as a point of record, I do have a personal uh, relation to, to this lot being a, uh, that I was, I was a resident of a lot on 67 Debbie Road. I own that lot from uh, 98 to 2008. Um, I know for a fact that uh, when, when the, the other lots up uh, on 30 Quincy Street were built, there was some defoliage um, up, al up along, and it occurred all down the back of Debbie Road. Um, mm -hmm. What I would like to propose is that there be a 50 foot buffer between all these lots and the lots on Debbie Road, and maybe make some maintenance of some of the foliage that, and maybe take and actually taking down all the dead trees that are there right now, because there is a problem with uh, dead trees falling on sheds and people's backyards on Debbie Road right now. That's that's a major concern, and there 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 are, there are other issues that uh, that I've addressed um, with the uh, with the property owner uh, in regards to other issues, but I I think. This is this is a this is a, a large parcel that's going to be developed, um, and I think this is this is a, a great use and a great proposal for uh, development of the property. Uh, does anybody else have any other comments relative to the size and configuration of the lot? I mean, that's really I mean that's the most I guess the I, most paramount we, issue. We, in we, we, we've, we've approved retreat lots like this in the past, and uh, and, and that that's become something. When we have when we have these types of properties, uh, we approve these retreat lots, and I I don't see a problem with that. Mr. Chair, I have a question. Yes, sir, Larry. Um, so based on you know I've heard the you know discussions before on some of our other meetings about retreat lots in the frontage here. If this is approved, because it looks like a pretty good plan, is. <clears throat> Zoning board, what is the zoning board going to do with that as far as the frontage issue? Well, the zoning board has to, the, well, we know that this is in an R1C. R1C is 175 feet of frontage and 30,000 square feet. So in other words, they're creating five lots that need relief in one fashion or another. You know, some of these lots comply area, some of them, and some of them need relief for both frontage and area. In fact, some of these lots need frontage area and lot width. So, I mean, um, and, and to attorney Nezzarella's point, the city of Brockton never adopted um, what we call a state lots or, or retreat lots. I did a little bit of research myself and I won't be labored, but I'll take, I'll take a minute and share with you. I did a little research myself this morning I've got a good uh, friend of mine who's been a land surveyor for 50 years or so, who, who's worked in all the towns. And I picked his brain on all the surrounding towns. And typically a, a typical retreat or a state lot that has a reduced frontage and excess area in the back, it, it's at least double. In other words, if you had, for example, if the city of Brockton is uh, 30,000 square feet, you, you would give 60,000 square feet. If it's an acre minimum, you would give two acres. So, you know, to their point that they're giving uh, excess land in the back, it's not, when you look at the estate lot or retreat lot concept, yes, they're big compared to Brockton, but these are not overly big as far as estate lots go and retreat lots. Mm -hmm. Although, and the other thing I want to clear up is I also agree with attorney Nezzarella's interpretation that the, that the, that the, that the, minimum 50 feet is not in play. That's something that was taken from, I think it's taken out of context in the section of 2712 existing lots of record that says, and that, that deals with an existing lot of record that has to be 50 feet of frontage and, and 5,000 square feet. This is not the case. So th this, there's some positives to this, but it's my concern is that I think it's very dense, um, especially when you consider what has been the norm, what has been the norm, and, and maybe Mr. Pina could speak to this, what has been the norm that the Zoning Board of Appeals has been granting 
the lot sizes in the last, certainly the last 18 months. But I mean, I understand that there's going to be situations in the city where you're going to have deep property that's a, it's a deep piece of property. But this seems to me to be, I, can I say, maybe a little over over ambitious, I think. I don't know. I don't, I don't see this as, as overly dense. I, I see this as a good use of the property as opposed to another development that, that someone might come in and try to add more lots. Um, I, I think, granted, the, the, the larger lots, lot, lot four and lot three are th three and four times the size of the average lot in the area. Lot, lots two and five are also bigger than uh, lots, other lots in the area. Um, I don't, I, I don't see how this derogates from the uh, development of the neighborhood. I, I see it as an improvement. And uh, from what I've talked to, from what I've heard from the neighbors, uh, um, it, it is an improvement because you, you realize that a, a parcel this size is going to be developed and we're looking for the best possible plan for it. And I think um, that the neighbors want to see the best possible plan. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't see any opposition to this from the people I've talked to. Okay. Well, anybody have any other comments or concerns? You mind if I make a point? Yes, good evening, good evening, Mr. Morrison. Thank you, Tim, uh, Tim and Pelagi. Uh, just a couple points. Um, first, for the record, we've owned the property since the 15th of December. So although we had this under contract when we initially applied, um, we've become the title owner. And so we've become aware of some of the things that we have to do with the property. A maintenance of a 50 foot buffer between our property and the residents on Debbie Road makes entire sense because one of the beauties of this property for three seasons, it's heavily foliated, it's intensely private, and it's kind of the nice individual aspect of this property. When we were in the process of purchasing it, I, <coughs> identified four abutters that we had to really reach out to. Uh, the school is across the street, the residents on Debbie Road, and to that end, I've had two meetings with Councilor Jeffrey Thompson and was able to meet, speak with them, walk the property, present the concept, and in my opinion, I believe he's in support of the, uh, of the proposal as we've presented. One point with the school is that um, if and when we were to develop, when it comes time to work in the road, we would obey any work in the road till the month of July and August, when the school at most would be in summer session, and we'd get off the road before September 1st, so school and life as, as we know it will resume uh, when school returns. So that would be our, our intention with the school. Maintaining the buffer is kind of a courtesy to the residents on Debbie Road who do enjoy kind of a deep foliage right now. Um, remember uh, Craig Pina's suggestion about removing a lot of the deadfall. This is actually an ideal time to do it because we know what trees are there or not. So in the next two months or so, there'll be a lot of cutting while we're trying to go through this approval process. At 30 Quincy Street, and, and 15 years ago is a lifetime, but at 30 Quincy Street, our neighbor David Lynch built not only a fabulous residence that he lives in, but he was approved for a five lot subdivision. And again, that was given the general um, sense of the times. Four, uh, three of the lots were basically 76 feet of frontage, about 8,000 square feet. One was at the end of uh, uh, Errol Road and it, it was about a half acre. And David kept two of the three acres that he had for his own personal residence. And, and it's, it's quite a property. When I met with him, and I've met with him on several occasions, he was more concerned about the development of the adjoining property because he has an extensive boundary between our property, 42 Quincy, and his, and, and certainly he wants something that would upscale his property. The houses that we're proposing are kind of consistent with the new trend of what's going on on this side of Brockton. Up on the west side, we've got great development up off of uh, Cypress Road, up off of uh, Chilton, Rockland Street, etc. But this is this is beginning to evolve here in in the east side of Brockton. The two colonials up front take advantage of of a good sized home, but maximizing both green space and area and the ability to get cars in and out 
the two cars out back are similar to what's being constructed up off of North Carey Street at the Curtin Farm um, subdivision that's ongoing right now. Uh, I believe Mr. Lynch is in support or in favor of something positive going on with the property. The family from whom we bought it, it's been kind of in a state, um, uh, well, it certainly hasn't been enhanced for a number of years, and that would be our purpose or goal. The other abutter on the other side is, uh, is the Bertarelli family. They own 14 acres, and they make no secret of the fact that somewhere down the road, they would look to uh, develop their property. I've spoken with Michael Bertarelli, and um, other than the fact that, uh, you know, we, he, he has no objection to what we're proposing. Um, and so I made sure that we tried to at least reach out and identify concerns of, of the abutting property uh, owners. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you. I, I had one quick question, Mr. Morris. The, the, the two forward lots, those are by today's standards, those, those house footprints are small. Did you say those are proposed colonials? Yes, yeah, sir. They're, they're 28 by 40. With a garage, with a two-car garage under on each side. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Um, any other comments on the part of the on the part of the board? <clears throat> I mean, obviously, everybody realizes the next stop for this would be the zoning board of appeals. But, but does any other board members have any comments, or or the part of the on or either the board members or the planning department? Um, I would actually like to bring to the board's attention that. Um, across from this is the Baker School and having these five driveways would increase traffic and create tra um, traffic concerns. Um, Mr. Well, Chairman, may I share my I'm screen? I'm not quite for sure how that can occur. Um, I understand what you're saying, but the Baker School, when they evacuate uh, at the time they let out school, you have hundreds of cars and vehicles coming out at most would be three to five cars, five cars coming out of this particular lot and they all don't come out at the same time. Um, you know, the roadways are made for traffic to egress and, eg and access. And so um, um, because you're putting a structure that's gonna contain a, a, a motor vehicle, I don't see how that's going to interfere or cause a adverse problem. Yes, there will be traffic, but whether or not it's adverse is questionable and there's no evidence there would be adverse especially when you look at the difference in proportions, you got the Baker School with their buses and cars coming in at all hours of the day and, and uh, during the school day and for the whole school year of 10 months, how that's going to be affected by five homes across the street. Mr. It, it's quite well Chairman. Taken, but I don't think there's, there's a lot of substantive merit to it, but I understand the concern. All right, thank, thank you, Councilor. Uh, yes, Mr. May. Um, I, I hope you can see the screen that I have up, which is the uh, uh, GIS system of, of the city. Yeah. Uh, what RISA was uh, reporting on is that you have a series of four driveways that are practically on top of each other um, that kind of align with this uh, turn off and, and turn around. And, and that may be a, a concern that she was speaking of. Yeah. Uh, I do want to point out that if I can blow this up a little bit more, as you can see the rest of the neighborhood, we're dealing with 80, 76 feet of frontage, 88 feet of frontage. Even if you go back onto uh, Debbie, you're, you're dealing with hundreds of, uh, you know, 100 feet of frontage. Um, I don't, the department doesn't have a problem with the retreat lot concept. Um, but I think that the 40 feet of frontage on these, uh, on lots three and four is a bit um, tight. Um, you know, we have not approved anything and the Zoning Board of Appeals has not approved anything that's been under 75 feet, or excuse me, under um, 50 feet. And um, I would hope that, um, uh, we could see a, a, a larger lot frontage uh, for those two lots or even combining them and having a four house subdivision rather than a three house or a five house subdivision. I think um, from, from what, the, what they said in the presentation, um, they're, they're willing to extend the frontage on the driveways for the, 
the two retreat lots. Um, but as far as the, I, I understand there's a confluence of four driveways. Um, would the developer be willing to flip the driveways on the two smaller lots so Abs the driveways are more separated? Absolutely. We certainly could. When, when I asked Scott to design the plan, he designed it exactly as I asked him. The moment we saw it on paper, I said, you know, we've got to flip those two driveways. Um, the, the lot two would be, it would be easily able to flip it to a right hand and uh, the lot five would flip that to a left hand and it removes that appearance of a lot of asphalt coming out at you on Quincy Street. Yeah, we could certainly do that. Because as, as a matter of traffic, I mean, the single family houses aren't going to add to traffic at all. Right. Um, it's just it's just the the the, the confluence of four driveways. I mean, there might be there might. I'm sorry, my light just went out. There might be a time when uh, when four cars are coming out at the same time, um, but that's going to be few and far between. Well, uh, you you might feel differently if you're a parent who used to bring your child in and out of Bates. Um, that school, because I lived on Bates Road myself, so I agree with Riza. Two more cars would be frustrating. It was it was terrible at well, the, the time the when I was bringing there is, the child. The traffic there is but, awful to begin with. I don't right, think, I right. Don't think... So two more cars would be frustrating. Yeah. I'm just saying. I lived it. I yep. lived it from the time he was in kindergarten until he went off to junior high. But can I ask um, Scott a sure. question? I'm by no means an engineer or architect. Um, is there any way to, with the size of these lots to if you're not going to consider going to four lots, could you move the houses back to give more frontage? Um, flip the driveways as I think um, Jim agreed to. We, we can certainly flip the driveways, as we just said. That that would certainly be doable uh, on those two lots, on lots two and lot five, make them opposite of what they are now. Uh, yeah, that's not a problem. That's a good idea, actually. And what would that I give more frontage if you flip them? I mean, it, it wouldn't give more frontage. It would just space out the the curb cuts yeah, and not have them all yeah. coming out within that hundred feet foot area, all in one place. Uh, it would just spread them out. I think, I think in, instead of the forty five feet for for the retreat lots, instead of forty five feet, can there be fifty feet? Right. I think that's the question. Oh, certainly, we'll make those two lots fifty feet. Yes. I think that's a reasonable modification to the plan. You're saying, and then you're saying, make the make the make the the uh, front the two front lots narrower, make them ninety five. Why am I the host now? It's the only way to do it. If yeah. if we stay yes. with five lots, the problem with the property is the house, the barn, and the garage are significantly structurally sound, and and it would be a travesty to take the property down to. Uh, uh, better utilize excess right. land. So we're working around the existing structures. No, um, you, you do have, I mean, I understand that, but you yeah. let's be clear, you have the opportunity uh, of, you have the opportunity of, of, of uh, reducing your, your, correct, your, your lot. Of, so, um, but okay. So I think, I think Tony's point, I don't want to, uh, you can, this paper, but I'll try. I think she was suggesting that you make the two front lots a little bit deeper so that you can take the two front houses and push them back off the street a little bit more. Was that your point, Tony? Yes, sir. Okay. Because, yeah, realistically, uh, folks, I mean, we, we can certainly, yeah, make those lots deeper and, and push the houses back a little bit because really that area on those two, <laughs> what I'm calling estate lots, lots three and four, if, uh, you know, if we push those lots back another 25 feet, it doesn't really impact those two estate lots. They would still end up with a hundred foot front yard. They'd still have plenty of grass to cut on a Saturday. So we could certainly do that. We could increase the size of two and five, uh, the depth of two and five and push those houses even further back off of Quincy Street. The only problem with lot two, Scott, is the existing driveway, which are ho hoping to maintain. Yep. Uh, to circumnavigate the three structures there. Oh, yeah. We have the benefit of a 75 foot rear yard setback. So we can actually set back without um, uh, violating the rear yard setback. We could set right. that back another 20 feet and still have a great backyard. Sure. Yeah, we, we can definitely make that work. I mean, I, as I mentioned earlier, Brockton doesn't have a state or retreat lot ordinances, but 
if it gives anybody any comfort, part of the research that I did today uh, revealed that these other towns that do support a state or retreat lots, their frontages, minimum frontages are 40 or 45 feet. So the, the 45 feet that they're proposing, if you're looking at this as an, an estate or retreat lot perspective, it's not that unusual. But anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in there. I mean, it, if you want to, if you, if, I mean, does it seem reasonable you want to come back with another iteration of this thing and see if it looks uh, a little bit more palatable, I guess? I don't know. I don't, um, know, if Mr. A, I don't know if there's a need to come back. I, I think, I mean, they, they, they flip the driveways on the two, the two estate lots. And uh, I'm not and, a big fan. We've learned this lesson, Craig. I'm sorry. I'm not a big fan of approving lots, that, approving a plan that I don't see. I don't, I just don't like the concept of approving plans. I mean, if there's something that's got to be changed on the plan, some correction, that's one thing. But I, I'm not a big fan of a board approving a plan that we don't see. Mr. Chairman, the only thing, um, may, may I make a suggestion? We also have some folks who would like to testify uh, of Butters, and we haven't gotten to that part yet. So if, uh, keep that in mind, please. Yes. Okay. Yep. I, this is not a this is a preliminary plan, so it's not a public hearing. But um, yes. if, if, if if you're are you recognizing someone that would like to speak there, Rob? Mr. Pilar. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I I can I respect your uh, concern about approving a plan that you you don't see. However, uh, if I may suggest uh, this as an option. If the board states this is how we want uh, that plan to be to result by having the 45 go to 50 feet, and we make those modifications, absent returning again, and this is simply for time frame, coming back to the board and proceed to the zoning board. That's not only going to be in writing, but you're also going to have uh, your liaison, uh, Mr. Peener, at the zoning board. So if we present to the zoning board a plan still showing the 45 feet or not having made any of the modifications, your suggestion, I think we have a big problem there. So I, I, I just I think it, the, it stretches out the time frame needlessly to agree to those modifications. The board is suggestion, suggesting, but they have to come back and say, here it is. We, we, you know, that plan well, is fine. going to go before the zoning okay. board with the recommendations in the, the statements made by this board, as well as your liaison to the uh, zoning board of appeals. The fact of the matter well, I don't that see this a jeopardy is a, that would be caused to the uh, the integrity of the decision made by the planning board. I, I just think in my I appreciate that, uh, Council. I just think that nothing beats seeing the plan. I mean, we're talking about making the changes. First of all, how long does how long, Pam? How long do we have with a with a pre preliminary plan? How long do we have? Do we have to make you would have it. Forty five days, I believe. Yeah. So you don't without their agreement to. A continuance? We would agree. We would agree one this way or the other. I, I, just don't, I, I just don't think that there's any any project or this project is in such urgency that we can't see. I would like to at least, I think in fairness to the board and the planning department, I would like to see what the plan looks like after the changes are made. I'm sorry. No question. I would say, I would say that I would, this is a preliminary plan and it still has to go back, come back to us as a definitive and it has to go to zoning. Well, it, can, um, it can go. It can go from if we give this our blessing. If the second iteration of this—that's my concern. If we give this, the the revision of this plan our blessing, it's this plan in its in its revised form is going to the zoning board. That's my as, but We're approving a preliminary, and when it comes to zoning, it's got to have the changes. And if, when it comes back to us, it'll have the approved changes from zoning. This is just a preliminary. Yes, but I mean, they can use, if we approve this preliminary and, and give it our blessing, the, the revised or upgraded preliminary plan, they can use that to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals, Mr. Pina. Agreed. So they can use it. So I would like to see, for my part, I would like to see, I don't know if the other, how the other board members feel, but we've run into this problem before, misunderstandings about what we thought. I just can't appreciate that we can't take another meeting cycle to see what this plan is going to look like before we send it on on its way. Mr. Palaji, speaking only for myself, uh, we would agree if you would allow us to come back to the next meeting to make those changes. This is a very informative meeting. It's what we had hoped to accomplish in a preliminary planning board meeting. Yeah, I, it, that, means, and that means that you'll have to agree to extend your, the time clock on your preliminary plan. Is that okay, Phil? Yes. 
Attorney Nazarello, I will send you the form tomorrow and you can fill it out and send it back to us. That's fine. All right, very good. I think we have something. Would someone like to make a motion, please? Uh, Mr. Palashi. Yes, sir. Uh, obviously this is not a hearing, but uh, we do have Councillor Jeffrey Thompson and Thanks. we have an abutter TJ, if you would like to um, recognize him, that is, that is the board's prerogative. Okay. And I did receive a letter from um, David Lynch. He was the only abutter that um, he sent in an email earlier saying that he had spoken with um, Mr. Morrissey and he was, they had satisfied his concerns and he was in favor. All right, very good. So we, we would like to recognize um, who was it, Mr. Mr. May, uh, Jeffrey, uh, would that be Councillor Thompson? Councillor Thompson, if he would like to unmute himself, uh, TJ is going to come back to the next meeting and once the plans are revised. So Councillor Thompson would like to uh, address the board. Um, please un unmute, turn on and jump in. Uh, thank, you. Uh, thank you, Rob, and uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, I, I, I believe uh, the, uh, I had an opportunity to uh, walk uh, this property and also to review the plans uh, that Mr. Uh, Feria presented tonight. Um, I, I think this board has come to a reasonable, um, um, a, a, a reasonable um, decision on, um, again, uh, looking at uh, increasing the uh, those uh, lots three and fours uh, frontage from 45 to 50, and also to um, um, you know reverse the um, the driveways uh, on both lots three and four. I think that's a reasonable compromise. Additionally, um, I am a proponent of the 50 foot buffer uh, from the rare property line. I think there are uh, some really nice trees in the back there that would provide some screening. Uh, between the uh, houses, the abutters on Debbie Road and this property. Um, I also do appreciate the, um, the uh, statement from the developer, uh, Mr. Morrissey, uh, regarding uh, um, doing the majority of construction of this property uh, during the summer months. I did speak to him about that and was concerned about some of the uh, construction uh, happening during the school year and uh, interfering uh, with the uh, school traffic. And so he has <clears throat> stated that he would uh, try to do the majority of the construction on this property uh, during the summer months so as not to have construction traffic uh, interfere with school traffic. Um, I look forward uh, to this matter going uh, before the zoning board, uh, taking another look at the plans uh, to address some of the issues uh, brought uh, by this board. And uh, at this point, I do approve of this project and uh, look forward to uh, getting this done. I think that um, the east side of Brockton needs new construction, uh, new single family home construction. Uh, I know Mr. Morrissey's work. I know the type of homes he builds, uh, the quality of housing that will be in this area. I think will uh, increase the property values of all of Butters and um, <clears throat> And I, I look forward to uh, seeing these uh, five high-end single-family homes uh, in this corridor from um, basically the corner of uh, um, Quincy and um, Quincy Court um, down to uh, Mr. Bartarelli's property. So I think this will, um, you know, really bring some uh, new higher-end housing uh, to this area, and I think it can only benefit the neighborhood in the east side of Brockton. I appreciate all your time, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, that's all. I, that's all I have. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, M Mr. Chairman. Yes. Thank you. I had a problem with my microphone earlier. Um, I would just like to suggest to the applicant that they strongly um, investigate a residential sprinkler for the two far back houses. Um, they're 280 feet off the roadway, and they, they'd make it difficult to fight a fire in those buildings. A residential sprinkler isn't a, a separate system that has to be installed. It's basically a, an extension of the domestic water pipes um, in the building. They use PEX tubing, just like you do for your regular hot and cold water type of thing. And if they want to call me tomorrow, I can lead them in the right direction to investigate it. I will call you tomorrow. 
Thank you, sir. All right. Well, um, let's see. So we have, an, I believe we have an understanding. So uh, this was going to require, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. May, was there someone else that, that wanted to speak? Uh, no, he will be coming back to the next meeting once the plans are redrawn. Okay, so uh, Pam, administratively, you need you need from the applicant an extension. Yeah, and I'll send that to Phil tomorrow morning, and he can just email it back to me, or I can send it to Scott. Either one. Um, Nezzarella. Uh, so we need a motion uh, to continue. Send it to me. However, I'll, I'll right no, there. you need a motion. You need a motion to continue, but um, I would suggest that you put in that motion everything you want to see in that revised plan so that there's no misunderstanding. When they motion to continue with the addition of the 50 foot buffer on the back lot lines, uh, the, the changing of the uh, arrangement of the driveways and the front lots and extending the front, the frontage on the retreat driveways to 50 feet. In reducing the smaller lots. Right. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. I lost. All right. So you've got the 50 foot buffer along Debbie? Yes, yes. along the back property line. Um, driveways are to be clipped. Two and five. Yep. With a 50 foot um, frontage on the retreat driveways. Lots to be. Do you want those other lots pushed back, Tony? That was um, three and four, correct? Well, they, they said that they would, well, the one that you can push back, maybe that would be, they said they'd run into it. Unless, here again, that's why it's important to see this on another plan because. Okay. Mr. Ferrier, you may. Would you think that there's a possibility that you could revise the driveway servicing the existing house so that you could push the two front houses back a little bit? Is that possible? Um, we really can't push the lot line for lot two back. We can certainly push the lot line for lot five back, but we can push both of those houses back. We've got a 75 Six. foot rear yard where we only need 30, so, so we, we have plenty of room to. To physically push those houses back, get them off yeah. of the street more yeah, than not, not, yeah. not dramatically. You want to leave them with a rear yard. But yeah. yeah, and the, but another, the houses on the plans right now are substantially, the lots are substantially larger than the other mm -hmm. lots on Quincy Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We can sure. we can push the house back by twenty feet. Okay, does that satisfy you, uh, Tony? Well, that's because the issue here was not enough frontage, so that's going to push back three and four and allow for at least a minimum of fifty. Correct. Correct. Okay. And um, Ms. Pina also asked that the dead trees um, be taken down, Sam. The, the yep. dead trees, yes. Weather permitting, of course. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, we have an agreement with the applicant, I assume. Yes. yes. Very good. So so the motion has been made. Has there been, has there been a second? I'll second, second it. Okay, motion made and seconded uh, with the details attached. Uh, a vote on the roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Reggie Thomas? Abstain. Are you abstain? Uh, yep. Craig Pina? Yes. And Bob Pelagi is a yes. Thank you, folks. See you in a month. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I believe we have a lot of participants. Next one. Yeah. I'm okay. Gonna... The next property is the Cypress Drive subdivision. Yeah. Uh, would the presenting team please raise your <clears throat> hand so that we can move you up to panelists? Uh, those presenting the, the case, the engineering team, the architects. Zoo. Azusa been moved. Uh, good evening. Uh, I don't see no. where well, raise my hand with, but I'm here. I'm going to move Councilor Cruz. Yes, please. And uh, yeah, we're just waiting, Azu. We're just waiting for everybody to join the meeting. 
Okay. Thank you. I think that might be who are, are there other property owners that are part of this? I don't think there's other property owners, but I believe there are other or residents. The, or the development team. Mr. Heichel here. Uh, Mr. Heichel, are you here? I was, I've been, I, was, I was speaking with him. And I believe uh, Mr. Uh, Kosciopoulos uh, is here. I see, I see Mr. Heichel with Art Kosciopoulos. Okay. All right, there they are. Oh, they're sitting together. Yes, sir. Okay. And I think everybody's been moved. To... Uh, Mr. Nazarella, are you part of this presentation? Being a butter. Uh -oh, what happened to my uh... Phil, Phil, could you unmute? Could you unmute, please? I don't know who we're hearing. Who's got their radio on? Can you remute those people and see if it's one of them? It's got to be somebody that just got unmuted. Yeah, I'll take care of that. I don't know who that is. Um, does anybody have their TV on in the background? I may have radio on. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, we found it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I thought I was far away enough. No. <clears throat> so do, would it appear as though we have uh, all the concerned parties, Mr. May? I'm moving. Uh, I'm moving him back. So okay. um, there are people with their hands up, and they just move them in. because I, I see a lot of the butters there. Azu, would you like to start your presentation now? Sure. Uh, do you want to, do you want to announce the item, Mr. May, or do you want me to? Now that we have everybody oh, on. Yes. yes, Mr. Chairman. Excuse me. Okay. Please All go right. ahead. For the record, this is a definitive subdivision. The property is at 53 Cypress Drive, and it looks like 300 Rockland Street. It's a five-lot residential subdivision, and the representative is ET Engineering. Again, this is a public hearing, a definitive subdivision. Uh, good evening, Azu. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let's see. Uh, I am home as well, and I'm not sure uh, if I can share my screen. Uh, I think uh, last time uh, well, Mr. May was able to allow me to cheat with his him sharing. Uh, wow. Um, I can share my screen if you would like which, that. Which, Azu, which sheet would you like him to post? Uh, basically, you know, uh, if uh, you can uh, show, basically, I want to just use two sheets, the uh, definitive subdivision layout and the existing conditions, if you will. Okay. So that will be sheet, so uh, I believe it's sheet so, uh, two and three. Okay. I have one, I just have one administrative point or question. It's been brought to my attention. Yeah, that's the one. It's been brought to my attention uh, that that you have not filed this subdivision with either the, or we don't have a response from either the Board of Health as a definitive subdivision or 
the city clerk, uh, there's no notification there. So Mr. May, uh, procedurally, do we go ahead with this or do we have to wait for that, for those filings to be confirmed or what is the planning department's position on that? I would uh, recommend that um, we not make it, that, that the board not make a, a final decision until that has been confirmed. Okay, but we can we can we can go I, ahead with the public hearing. You should be, I think you should be able to hear the public hearing. Very good, sir. All right. Well, uh, again, good evening. I'm sorry to interrupt you again. Continue, please, Azu. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for indulging us, and uh, uh, Mr. May. Thank you for sharing the file. Uh, uh, I appreciate you, and uh, uh, again, uh, I think you uh, uh, the uh, planning uh, group. Uh, 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 honoring you as the planner of the uh, year, uh, uh, this this again uh, <laughs> exemplifies why they do that. That uh, uh, there is uh, uh, there are some expertise and not just uh, uh, a paper push. And I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. And uh, anything. Remember, I don't have a vote. <laughs> that's okay. That's, that's okay. But he's, I he's hoping that you do. No, 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 he doesn't. But I, I still am entitled to uh, make uh, good comments when they are appropriate, you know. Um, uh, but uh, basically, uh, well, this sheet that is being shared right now is the existing site conditions. Uh, basically, you have three properties that we in, uh, that are involved. Uh, if you're looking at the north, the north points to the top of the page, and uh, Cypress Street will be to the north and um, Rockland Street uh, is to the, uh, Rockland Street will be west. So the existing uh, uh, two properties, number 300 Rockland Street and uh, number 53 Cypress Street. Uh, we do have a small property that we identified as zero uh, Rockland Street, which uh, if I may at this point, uh, indicate that that property will be uh, discontinued uh, from being part of this subdivision. So what I'm hoping to do this evening is to introduce the project and then uh, we are uh, we're going to be asking for a continuation of the hearing so that we can uh, uh, submit to the staff an updated plan uh, eliminating uh, that uh, parcel and uh, if you look at it, uh, Mr. May, if you can zoom into my title block, and I will probably identify it is that real rectangular piece to the southeast corner of the uh, uh, of the land in question. And uh, if you look at my title block, it's referred to. Uh, if you hold it right there, yes, sir. Uh, it's re uh, assessor's map number ten, lot number uh, sub block one hundred two. So that will be eventually uh, uh, in the revised plan that we make and will be eliminated from that. If we can then go to sheet number three, Mr. May, the, uh, the lot in plan. Thank you, right there. Yeah, excellent, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, the, the subdivision basically includes uh, two exist the existing houses, uh, the one at number 300, and then the number at number uh, 300 Rockland Street, and the one at number 53 Cypress Street. Uh, we are proposing a roadway, we're calling it a Volix, a Volix Drive. Uh, it'll come in and travel southerly from Cypress Street, and then we'll turn westerly to the terminus point where we have the cul-de-sac. Uh, the lots that we are proposing all have at least 100 feet of frontage, and uh, two of them exceed the uh, uh, minimum lot area required for uh, uh, for the residential 1C district. Uh, obviously, we have reduced frontage. The required frontage uh, in this district is uh, 175 feet. We are... Uh, uh, will be under the 175 feet. However, we anticipate uh, going to the uh, Board of Appeals. If you recall, the process that we used to employ 
would be to go to the Board of Appeals to uh, re review the uh, frontage reduction as well as the lot square footage reduction. But our uh, the city, in its wise, in its wisdom, uh, will change the uh, procedure. So we start with the planning board and we go to the Board of Appeals. Uh, the road that we have here meets your 50 foot right of way requirement and the cul de sac uh, requirement. We will be able to provide a 34 foot uh, traveled width and sidewalk on one side. Several waivers that we are going to be requesting uh, in order to minimize the disturbance of the uh, area and to reduce our impact on the wetlands, uh, which, uh, if you look at the uh, project to the southeast, we do have. Uh, wetlands resource in that area. So one of the uh, waivers that we're going to be requesting of this board uh, is to allow an offset pavement so that we will shift the pavement so that the pavement is not centered within the layout in order to, uh, um, uh, again, uh, re reduce any impact in the wetlands. Uh, we will be able to uh, detain and retain all runoff from the road as well as individual lots uh, to uh, meet the 100-year uh, storm event requirements, including the, uh, uh, the city's ordinance for MS4 stormwater management consistent with the uh, EPA and DEP's uh, current guidelines and regulations. So that is the overview of the project. And um, I will entertain any comments or questions, but uh, we're keep in mind that uh, we would uh, uh, look to um we would look to uh continue this hearing and then be able to uh uh adjust the uh, layout to uh eliminate the zero rockland street that was part of that was part of the original submittal and i was i was uh mr chairman i will uh, uh, make this statement we do have a receipt uh that we contacted at the time we filed the application we contacted the office of the Board of Health and they uh, uh, made an appointment and we were able to uh, have them meet us at their entrance door. They accepted the plans and they gave us a receipt. So I do have a receipt from the uh, Board, of, uh, Board of Health. Uh, we okay. contacted the office of the city of, uh, clerk and uh, told us no, uh, they gave us an appointment and then they called us back and canceled the appointment and said no, we're not going to uh, meet anybody in person. Send your uh, send what you need in the mail. So uh, your office was generous enough. I will again, and I know Pam doesn't have a voting uh, um, <laughs> uh, uh, thing in this, uh, and uh, Raisa doesn't. Okay, and uh, but I do say that I like the way your uh, staff run the office. Even when they even when they disagree with me, I still think that they do a good job. Of, uh, <laughs> Keep everybody informed and right. uh, moving things along. So, thank what you. Thank you, you for that. I can still I can still make a positive <clears throat> of what they do, and they do a very damn good job. So, with that, I will zip my mouth, and then I will entertain questions or comments, Mr. Chairman. Well, thank you, thank you for the presentation. Um, okay, members of the uh, planning board, let's start there. Uh, I have some comments and some concerns. I guess I'll save my comments and concerns till the end, but. Uh, members of the planning board, let's start there and uh, share share with uh, with all your your comments and concerns as you see them. Please. I don't see many concerns. I mean, as a member, as the the planning board member to the uh, zoning board, I, I I'm look. You you did mention, as you mentioned, the uh, frontage and uh, this this lot. This, this project is full of a bunch of odd shaped lots and the 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 uh, the hardship of size size and shape is definitely definitely comes into play here so uh, I, I don't I really don't see any problems with this on my on my end okay any other comments on the part of the board members all right uh, well, well I, I, Tony, uh, I'm sorry mr. chairman Tony had asked that I put the uh, aerial up, and I didn't know if that's if she had any questions regarding that. Uh, is it? It I can't see what I'm per, uh, projecting. So is the uh, ortho 
uh, GIS map up? Yes, it is. Yes, yes. yes it okay. shows up pretty good. <laughs> yeah, th thank you. I just can't see well on the, the printout or what was on the screen, but I, I don't have any questions. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other comments on the part of the board? Well, my comments and concerns, and, and I'm sure you're aware of it, uh, Azu is a veteran is a veteran engineer and land surveyor. Um, I'm sure you're aware that's probably part of why you want a continuance is because when you hold up this definitive subdivision plan against Brockton subdivision rules and regulations, uh, you you know you're deficient in many ways. You you probably realize that. You, for example, you don't have a you don't have a profile, you don't have drainage, you're not showing any drainage, you don't have drainage calculations. There's, there's many things that are, without going enumerating them all, uh, that's probably why you're asking for continuance. My, my, that's a general comment. My specific concern is with lot number three, I think there was a drafting error that was made there, or a design error was made. The minimum setback in a lot, a residential lot in Brockton is 30 feet. You're showing 20 feet. If you close that building envelope on lot number three down to what is minimally required, you can't you can't establish a house on lot number three. Uh, what are you referring to as a? Uh, well, if uh, you look at you look at your minimum setback on lot number three, you, you you've got your dash line that represents that represents your building box, and you're showing yes. it twenty foot. So I thought it was I initially I grabbed my scale because I still have a set of scales. And I threw a scale on that, and it is graphically, it, it, it says 20 feet, and it's, and it's graphically showing 20 feet. If you open that up to 30 feet, which it should be, and I don't even know these days, Azu, in my working days, every, every building administrative administration interpreted the, the definition of setback, front and yard setback differently. Some wanted the stairs, some wanted the edges of, the edges of decks, and you get the idea. So you're not going to have a viable building box. When you close that building box down to what is allowed, you're not going to have a building box on lot three. I'll take a look at it, Mr. Chairman. But uh, the way I'm looking at it, the 20 feet uh, from the existing house lot line, I look at that as a side setback, and that's 20 feet. The front but you're showing, but you're, well, you're showing the, aren't you showing the, aren't you showing the front door? Uh, on your new road? Yeah. You, you're showing the... It'll be 30 feet, 30 feet from the new road all around. No, oh, you're showing, if I'm, uh, unless I, it doesn't, you're showing, if I'm, unless I'm misinterpreting your, your graphic, you're showing the front door the front of the house. You're showing the front of the house on, on the on the L of the the new road there. Right. The, the, that is just graphic. Uh, we uh, well, the, uh, well, we can eliminate that. That's not a problem. We we can eliminate that. Can you let you, the dog out? Ebony's barking. You you would have to turn. You would have to turn the house in the other direction because, as I'm sure you know, the the when you orient the the front yard setback is the orientation for that is based on <coughs> where the front door is. And, and based on your graphic, you don't you don't meet your rear yard setback. We will have, we will clean that up, Mr. Chairman. Well, that's my comment. You you, you can't again. You, I think you understand my point. But the way you've oriented that house, you don't you can't comply with minimum rear yard setback. If the if that bump out in the front re represents the front door, I took it to mean that the house was facing. The L on the new road, you don't have rear yard setback, but that, that's my comment. But that, uh, 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 and I appreciate uh, that, Mr. Chairman, and uh, uh, that also could uh, be a subject for a variance with the Board of Appeals. As you, yes, sir. Um, on the drawing that I have up, uh, I hope you can see my cursor. Is this yes. the front of this house? Uh, right now, that is the uh, side, but we can turn that house around a little bit. Okay, so that if, if this were the front, obviously the driveway is coming in the rear, this becomes a side yard and not a backyard. 
Right, and that would be only 20 feet. That's 15 that, feet quiet. 15. That's what I thought you were proposing. Right. Yes, sir. But again, just to be clear, the way it's showing right now, Rob, he's 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 he, he doesn't have Correct. a compliant Correct. EAN. We will address that, Mr. Chairman, and uh, and then take care of that. Any other comments on the part of the uh, board members? Any comments on the part of the uh, planning department, please? Marissa? Um, my biggest concern is that it's on the 20 feet buffer zone and that automatically uh, makes them have to go through conservation commission first. Uh, we do uh, we do plan on uh, going before the conservation commission with the uh, once we uh, uh, adjust the buildings. I would I would make this comment too though uh, that um, we will have to go regardless, even if we are fifty feet away from the wetlands, we'll still have to go to the conservation because hundred feet established its its jurisdiction. Jurisdiction. So we do expect to uh, go to conservation commission. As in, were you moving the roadway out of the 25 foot no touch? No, because uh, uh, at the end of the day, we what we have to do is when we go to Conservation Commission, uh, uh, we can uh, propose certain uh, uh, enhancements in that area. Uh, at the end of the, the, the 25 feet, uh, that's why we are asking for a waiver on the uh, location of the improved width of the roadway, because what you're looking at is right of way, not actual improved width. So we're going to be asking the board about for a waiver to uh, about shift the road so it's not centered within the layout. And that will increase the uh, set, uh, the distance from the actual paved improved way of the roadway away from the wetlands. But I also will suggest uh, that uh, we have to go to conservation, obviously, but I will note uh, that the 25 feet it's a desirable uh, uh, policy of the commission, but it's also not a, uh, I, I want to make sure that we understand that it's also not a regulatory of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, requirement. It's a, you are correct. It's a policy requirement, uh, it's, uh, a policy design. So we have to address that with the Conservation Commission, and we'll hope that uh, when we uh, revise the plans, uh, it'll be it'll be uh, uh, done in a way that is sensitive to the statutory interests of the Wetlands Protection Act. There are a lot of people here. All right. Um, if we're, I think if we're done with that part of the hearing, in other words, the board members uh, I, apparently are are, are satisfied, temporarily satisfied at this point in the planning department is, uh, Mr. May, uh, this being a public hearing, um, I wonder, it, does everybody have a microphone? Is everybody, can everybody hear the meeting now, Mr. May? I would hope, I would hope they can. I believe so. And um, out of respect for his position, we may want to ask um, Councillor Cruz, the ward councillor, um, to start the uh, discussion from the abutters point of view. Yes, and I would ask, uh, good evening, Mr. Cruz. Are, are you there, Councillor? Good evening, Mr. Pelagi. And actually, uh, I know the zoning usually, I, I just let, soon let the neighbors speak first and then I'll finish up. Okay, yes, I, was hoping, I was hoping to eliminate or reduce, these things can get repetitive and I was hoping to either eliminate or reduce the repetitiveness of the comments. If there was, do you know, Mr. Mr. Cruz, is there a, is there an identified spokesperson for the abutters, do you know? I, I don't believe there is. And I, I can speak uh, first if you'd like me to. That would um, be helpful. Yes, because if you can- and I, will, you can... I will say up front that I do want to let it be known that one of the abutters is a relative of mine. So I just want that known. But I've yes. heard from several of the neighbors and- And when a, fine, I look at a this, fine upstanding citizen of Brockton he is. I, I believe so too, but I just want to make sure that, uh, that I stated that so that nobody could uh, I don't want to be accused of hiding that, but uh, when I look at this, I see, I see requests for, for properties uh, for exemptions to 
to uh, almost every uh, subdivision point that, uh, as far as the street goes, that I believe we have. I I see to get to a meeting and find out that one whole part of the uh, plan is being taken out. Uh, that map ten lot sublot one hundred two, I guess it is, is being taken out. Um, I don't see how the uh, this could be built and match. I listened to two of your earlier hearings and both of them talked about how it fit in with the neighborhood. This is probably the finest neighborhood in the city of Brockton. Uh, and what I look at, I don't see any way it can match the uh, quality of, of what's what happens in this neighborhood. Um, the houses seem too small. I don't understand how the drainage could be handled. And again, that. Uh, isn't necessarily all yours, but I, I don't I don't see how the drainage can be handled and not affect all of the houses in the area. It's very close. The the depths of some some of these lots against other neighbors is is minuscule, and I I don't I just don't see how it can work in that way. Uh, we'd be creating all they'd be creating their own hardships to to be going to the zoning board of appeals. And then I'd be at that meeting where they claim they had a hardship, but they'd be creating their hardships by creating the, the street, which the off center thing, uh, I'm not in favor of it. The look and the curb appeal is so important, particularly up in that neighborhood. Um, I guess I'll let, let it go and, and let some of the neighbors speak, but it just seems like we're trying to pound a, a, a round peg into a square hole here. This. Uh, I think most of you are aware of, you know, where this is, what piece of property this is, and um, I just don't see how how we can fit this this much in there. And again, to come in and ask for an exemption on every almost every single part of the roadway build out, just because that's the only way the roadway can be built to satisfy the uh, wetlands act and uh, policies, is, is just th there's a reason those policies are there. So. I'm very much against this and and I appreciate, and again, uh, some of the people involved are friends of mine, but it's just, I have to stand up for the neighborhood and it, it's just, this doesn't fit there. And I think, you know, there are people, some of you live up that way and I think you know that also. So I'll, I'll take it at that and hopefully some of the neighbors can not be labor, but let you know how they feel about it. And thank you for the, letting me speak and thank you. You're doing a great job. I know how hard it is to run a Zoom meeting, Bob, and, uh, and uh, you're doing a great job. So thank you very much. Thank you for your time, Council. Thank you. Um, is there is there a uh, uh, is there a representative that would like to speak in behalf of the in behalf of the neighbors so that we can minimize uh, some of the repetition? I, I think it's important to get all of the points out. We need to hear them for sure. But uh, we'd like to if you can if you can if you can pick or assign a representative that would be helpful. Uh, I believe the Evans Mills would like to speak. So if you will unmute yourself. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Vance Mills. Um, to my left is my wife, Valencia Evans Mills. Um, we are the owners of 211 Fairview um, Avenue. And we are um, also the owners of, uh, I think it's- Lot 10. Lot, no, 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 Lot lot 140R, which Mr. Etonori responded to as, referred to as um, lot 102, um, that is no longer in the, um, in the plans anymore. Um, we're opposed to, to the development. Um, we did, however, entertain it at some point in time because we were approached by two um, individuals. The first person who approached us was Mr. Um, Art uh, Kastapoulos. And Mr. Kastapoulos approached us to basically, in short, give him our property that's behind our house, which is the, the property that you see, which is lot 140R, um, sublot 102. And so, um, and so for, for clarity, sir, Yes, sir. That 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 parcel that you just identified, Map Ten, Lot One Forty R, is your property. It's a, it's your your property, and that not that's not part of this development. It is that's, not. It is not. It is not part of the development. 
However, Mr. Katapoulos approached me and requested that I give him the property. Um, I then told him that maybe we can come to some other sort of agreement. He informed me that the property was worthless and that um, he was going to just beautify the area um, based on the subdivision that they were going to put in. It is unbuildable, it is wetlands, and I knew that when I purchased the home at 211 Fairview Ave. So I started to do my research, and one of the first phone calls I made was to um, Mr. Um, Heichel. Uh, I know Mr. Heichel from the neighborhood. Um, I've been a resident of Brockton for over 18 years. Uh, we just purchased this house here on the west side about two years ago. Um, I called Mr. Heichel just to get an idea of what that parcel of land might be worth and how I can find out what it is actually worth. Um, Mr. Heichel then informed me that he was a part of that particular development and then proceeded to um, entice me to sell it to them or ask me what is it that I wanted for it. I had no intentions of selling it in the first place, but I wanted to know what it was worth. So I continued to do my homework. Mr. Heichel then um, took liberties at, um, again, trying to entice me to sell it. He then offered me approximately $10,000 to sell. Um, and he also at, at one point said that he was gonna bring by some plans, which I have here. Um, he showed me the plans, he gave me a copy of the plans. The day that he said he was coming by to bring me a copy of the plans, he also showed up with a document stating that he was under um, deadline to submit to the uh, city of Brockton planning board. And um, this application that he gives me, he requests for me to, to, be, uh, uh, to sign it on the spot. And I, I took the document and I looked at it and I said, well, you know, I would definitely have to have an attorney look at this document before I signed it. I then oh. took a copy of the, cop, the, the document. I made a copy of it. I gave him back the originals. And then later on, as I looked at it, I noticed that he gave me two doc, two pages of this document. Mr. Evans, First page. Mr. Mr. Evans. Mr. Mills. No, no, Mr. Evans. Uh, you, uh, no, 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 no. My name is Mills. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Mills. Pardon me. Yes. My apologies. What, I, what we're looking for at this stage, and I, and I appreciate you sharing that experience. What we're looking for at this stage, uh, as far as a butter a butter input or a butter comments is. And, and I, again, this is this is, sounds like it's been a long uh, a trail for you, but we'd like to hear your comments about um, your comments as a director butter as to uh, your comments or your impression of the of the of the, the development uh, more than the details of the of your of your own trials and tribulations, if you could please. Okay, if if I may, and I, I'll try not to take up too much more of your time. But this document that he tried to get me to sign um, was an eight page document of which he only presented me two pages of and asked for my signature. This would impact us. We purchased this property because we liked the serenity and the quietness of this area. If a development goes up behind us, that is going to take away from that quietness and serenity that we have. Um, we, we've moved into this to be our forever home. Um, I'm looking at retirement in the next 40 year, four years, and I'm looking at just that. I want to have the serenity and the peace and quiet. My wife has something she would like to say, though. Okay. Just to answer your question, um, in regards to them building in that area, I, I am going to reiterate. Um, in the search of looking for homes, we initially were, my husband was hooked on that we should do new build, and I was clear I don't want new build, I want character. This whole area, is character. You're not gonna build character behind me. And I feel like that's going to take away from what's already here. That's what I wanted to share. All right, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Uh, are there any other abutters or any other concerned citizens that want to speak relative to the development of this project? You recognize any, Mr. May? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the, if you are in the panelist section, and would like to speak, um, please, uh, you're free to unmute your uh, microphone. We've moved Mr. Packard and um, another couple of people forward. Um, 
we also have um, in the panelist section, um, Attorney Nezrella, um, a person named Bob, um, and any of those people who would like to testify, please Who unmute your microphone and, and Denise. Okay. Denise. 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 Denise is here. Yes, Denise, can you get your last name Denise. and address? Denise Dragonetti lives at um, 233 Fairview, and I have bought the up and coming lot five. I wish you could have come to my house on Christmas Day when we got two inches of rain and there were probably still six inches of snow left on the ground and my garage completely flooded. I live in a wetlands. I have bought lot five. It is, if you'd like to walk down there with your boats, go ahead, make sure they're really tall. It is so mucky and wet, it's wetlands. So when I see a proposed house, it's gonna be barely 20 feet, the actual home, 20 to 30 feet away from my fence. It's like gonna be in my backyard. Where will the deer live that come through on a regular basis every single morning that live in that area? I'm very upset. Uh, yeah, I, I'm looking at the plan as you're speaking. Uh, is it Miss Dragonetti? Mrs. Yes. Mrs. Uh, pardon me, Mrs. Dragonetti. Eight. And I'm looking at the plan as you're speaking. The, the proposed dwellings are a substantial di distance away from the back of your property. I saw it between 233 and 223. We, 233 and 223 are neighbors, and we saw the proposed home right in our own backyard. Uh, no, there's uh, let's see, I, I left my school no. in the room, but uh, no, the, the, the proposed dwellings, um, they're not, they're not, I'm looking at, I'm looking at the site plan here. You are uh, lot 143, sub lot 28, it says. Yes, I am. Uh, yeah, the, the, the proposed dwellings are, let's put it this way, your, your name, your house is to the left and right of your existing house is closer than what they're proposing. I just okay. wanted to clarify that. It's, uh, but well, I'm not. Uh, um, but, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a, please continue with your, uh, your well, comments. I apologize. Something may have changed since I knew where the house was actually going to go 33, 30 feet from my fence. No. And I will take another look. But again, where are the deer supposed to go? They come through my yard every day. All right. Thank you. Um, was, did that complete your comments? Yes, it does. All right. Thank you very much. Was there anybody else that, that, had comments relative to the project. I see. I see someone. Uh, how about Mr. Mr. And Mrs. Packett? Is it Rob? Can you acknowledge them? Uh, if, if the Packards would like to unmute your microphone, uh, you're more than welcome to speak. Your microphone should be in the lower left Not corner yet. of the Zoom window. Right there. Unmute it. She's got it. No, nope. hey, hey. you were there. I don't know. You probably would hope that I would put it back on because we have a lot to say. We're going to okay. Get it okay. In the interest, in the interest of time, uh, I would ask uh, Mr. and Mrs. Packard that you have. Have you heard the comments that have been made to this point? We have, and I would consider that I would be a direct abutter to this proposal that's coming up. And I haven't heard anything. We haven't heard anything about it until just recently. Tonight. Until and and I'm kind of like taken by it because it seems a little underhanded. And, and regardless of what's going on, we built in 98 and we did this with the concern of everything staying the same. Where are you? What's your location, please, sir? We're, we're at 69 Cypress. We're on the, we're, we're on the, the east side of the- Oh, I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're, you're on the, yeah, I see you. We haven't been informed about anything. And, I, and I, I'm just saying that we didn't want to see any development at all. You didn't, and so you didn't. You didn't receive notice. You didn't receive notice by certified mail. No, we just received about. I think it was yesterday. Yesterday, a certified letter that was we were supposed to receive that the mail carrier didn't bring up to the house, even though we were home, and we um, we haven't been really enlightened about anything that's been going on. 
Well, that's they're all they're required to do, sir. And no, I'm not trying to minimize it, but they're required. I understand. To... I understand we didn't receive the letter. We did not receive the letter. All as we received in our mailbox was a certified mm -hmm. uh, note saying we needed to go to the post office. That was that's, it. We that's because home. that's because the post the postman uh, wasn't able to deliver it for whatever reason. You were in home. You couldn't get Correct. a signature. And there's yeah. there's other people in the neighborhood that just received the letter today. So okay. it's just. That's but okay, I just wanted to make sure because the because the applicant is compliant with the regulations. That's all. This is okay. true, but I just want to go on record just by saying that we're opposed to this one hundred and ten percent, and we'll do everything to stop it. Okay. Did That's you have all. any? Did you have any specific issues that have are have not already been made? No, nope. not at this time. All right. Thank you very much, Rob. Do you recognize anybody else that was, wishes to speak? Bob, I'd like to just finish up before uh, before you close the hearing. If oh, we're not going to close it. Um, uh, go ahead, Mr. Go ahead, Councillor Cruz. Yes. Thank you. I think it's pretty pretty striking to me that if you look at that plan, that the package were not never approached. I think there's a legal question whether they will even be part owner of the what will become a private way. Um, and it, again, I, I think that this. This, this whole plan, this whole plan doesn't need in my opinion to be continued I have full respect for this board but this is a plan that there's, there's no good thing in this plan there's the neighbors have barely even spoken to um, the fact that the people who will be sh sharing essentially that street whenever the package were never approached by the, this development team I think shows that it that this this pro, uh, this project just doesn't belong in there. The try you know it is trying to just be jammed in. It doesn't belong. I don't see how you can how we can ap approve a subdivision that is asking for almost every regulation in the city to be to be uh, waived. So I would ask the board, and again, I'd ask the board to get, to vote no on this tonight, and let's be done with this. Thank you. Thank you for for your attention, everybody. Thank you. Um, does that, does, do you see, do you recognize anybody else that wishes to speak? Mr. Somebody's Mayor? got a hand up. I'm sorry? Uh, did you just, I think somebody else wants to speak. Corey? Paul and? Yes, Paul and Mary Beth. Good evening. Uh, could you identify yourself, please? Yes, uh, Mr. Paul Corey, 82 Cypress Drive. You're at 82 Cypress. Yes, I'm not a direct of butter, but I just want to reiterate what Councillor Cruz had already stated, that this development absolutely does not belong in this area. And they're trying to jam it down the throats to try and make a quick buck. It really doesn't belong here. It doesn't fit with the neighborhood. Nope. And we built in 97, thinking this area, you know, would stay the way it is. And there's been other other interests coming in from Chilton Road, but I guess that's that's another issue, not for tonight. But and that's all, right. all I really wanted to reiterate what Mr. Cruz said. He said it so eloquently. All right, thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you. Uh, anybody else that you recognize, Pam or Mr. May? I, I recognize some of butters, but I'm guessing they don't want to speak. So, okay, they're not asking. To, they're not asking. To Their hands are not up. Okay, uh, well, back to the board. I, I, I've expressed what my concerns are. That lot number three is very troubling to me. I think the fact that they're going to take that lot and they're going to put it up on blocks and see if they can squeeze, and I mean squeeze a house in there. And I think if you put a very slender house, you could probably meet the spirit of, if you turn it 90 degrees, because it graphically they're facing the L-shaped the L -shaped, uh, proposed street there, but um, the, you, you could probably do it, but it, it's not consistent with what's in the neighborhood. That's my personal opinion. I've got, I have personally have concerns about the whole subdivision, the spirit of it, the, the way it's designed and the way it's, the way it's, the way it's fit in there, I, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm 
I, I just have some very strong concerns about it. Um, and again, we've, we've already spoken about the about the deficiencies of, of the plan as a definitive subdivision plan. It needs, it would certainly need to be a complete filing. I, we don't need to belabor the, the list of the requirements of a definitive subdivision plan in the city of Rockland, but it needs, it would need a lot of, uh, and I don't have to, I'm sure Mr. I'm sure Azu is aware of that. He's a, he is a veteran land surveyor and a veteran engineer, so he's aware of that. But those are my comments. Are there any other comments on the part of the board? I also live on um, Fairview Ave, so I have to agree with the uh, issue with the, you know, deers there. This is a very busy road on Fairview and the deers are still everywhere. Um, so I agree with that concern. And can I ask a question? Um, in this type of situation, should should they have gone to conservation first? Well, what's the order? Should that have happened first to to avoid even having to bring this in front of us? Well, they should have at least. Typically, you would at the very least, and someone jump in, and if I if I miss make a misstatement, you would at least file concurrently, so that you had that action going on at the same time. Because, because as we all know, and, and as I'm sure the developer knows, in the process of filing with CONCOM, there's a lot of issues that come up that have influences on the plan that, that, are, gonna, that are gonna influence or change the plan in its final version that, we, that would come to us. So that they should have, if not gone first, they should have filed at least concurrently anyway. Okay, that's all, thank you. Well, um, I, uh, I've expressed my concerns. Uh, so in the, in Mr. Chairman, in the interest of all concerned, I, the, the petitioner has, uh, has re actually requested an extension. So in, in the interest of all concerns, so that everyone may be better informed, I'd, I'd like to uh, make a motion to continue this to the uh, February meeting. Will you be ready at the February meeting? Those plans need to be in within two weeks or a week, two weeks. I don't know. That's a, that's a tall challenge. Again, I, I'm not going to belabor the, the deficiencies of the plan, but I mean, you, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be right up front with you. I'm not encouraged by this plan. If you want to put more work into this plan and more time and effort and energy, that's your choice. That's your prerogative. Um, uh, but the, there, are, there are several deficiencies with the plan. Uh, if you want to go forward with it, we would strongly recommend that you concurrently, you don't have to, you certainly are not required to, that you concurrently file with conservation, but uh, I'm trying to give you my uh, straight from the shoulder, as they say, opinion of this project, but. Um, so I'd, I'd don't... amend my motion to continue this to the March meeting. Does, does that give you enough time, Azu? Yeah, the March meeting, uh, 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 and I would, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, I know, I know your job is not an easy job, and I don't, uh, I don't envy your position. And uh, quite clearly, I understand the comments by the Abadas and the uh, Ward Councilor. Those are uh, well-founded and legitimate concerns and comments, and uh, that's why we are here for a public hearing. And uh, we will do what we have to do, and uh, and uh, we'll come back. And uh, basically, that's why we come to board to get some input, get some feedback. And we appreciate all the feedback and all the comments. And uh, uh, I don't think uh, we you're gonna uh, find anybody on my side uh, being cantankerous or anything like that. So we will go back and then uh, try to. Uh, uh, incorporate these comments and um, see the, see if we can address them and uh, come back before this board. Yes, we are aware of the fact that we need to go to Conservation Commission. We are not uh, oblivious to that uh, requirement. Um, and uh, it's a question of uh, how you prioritize things and, and we go from there. So, but I do appreciate all the comments. Uh, I believe if I were, if I were on our bottom sitting on the other side, Maybe I will be making the same type of comments. So uh, we will uh, do what we can to address those comments and, uh, um, and uh, um, come back here in March. 
And uh, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll be able to, uh, uh, to at a certain level, assuage and, uh, and mitigate some of those concerns and comments. All right, thank you, sir. Okay, so there's been a motion made to continue the definitive subdivision uh, to the meeting I'll in second, March. I'll second, second, second that motion. Pardon? Yeah, I'll second it. Okay, so we I'll second the motion. motion. A motion and a second. So a roll call vote, please. Larry Hassan? Yes. Uh, Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Reggie Thomas? Yes. Craig Pina? Yes. And Bob Pelagi is a yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, can we take like a two minute break? Yes, please do. Thank you. I'm going to pause the recording until the board comes back. Start recording again. We're back on. Looking for Patrick Sullivan. Or is it going to be? Eric Diaz. Patrick, oops. Did you do you have Patrick? Oh, is that Patrick? Just Patrick? I think I put Bob there up there. Back. There's Patrick. Patrick. Okay. Do you do you have Brock and Access on, Rob? Yes, they are. Can we go forward? Yes, we can. All right. Very good. So, agenda item number six: site plan approval amendment is retail marijuana. Its property is at. 747 uh, Center Street, Representative is uh, Patrick K. Sullivan, Esquire. And uh, I assume, Mr. Diaz, you're also a representative, or do we have Attorney Sullivan? Yeah, uh, Patrick is on, and I am um, assisting Patrick tonight. Wonderful. All right, whichever, whichever of you gentlemen would like to make your presentation, please go forward. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Patrick Sullivan um, on here on behalf of the applicant. Uh, and as you know, Eric Diaz, uh, who's here, the engineer on the project. I'll keep it short. Um, I saw the staff report that was sent out today. Um, and I think that gives a good explanation, but just for a little background and where we are, uh, this site was before you previously. Um, we might be a year and a half, two years ago now, and the staff report does uh, uh, have that information, but we received a site plan approval on this site. It was for the front portion of the lot, as explained in my uh, application to you. Uh, it did not include the back portion because it was, at that time, the back portion was zoned uh, as residential. After our approval from the planning board, the back portion of the lot, along with some other uh, lots in that area, were rezoned to C2 commercial zoning district, which does allow for retail marijuana establishments. So at that time, we went and amended our special permit from the zoning board um, to allow the use of the parking lot in the rear of the parcel. And uh, we did receive that amendment to our special permit. Uh, now we're before the planning board basically to just amend our site plan approval to allow the use of the rear parcel for the parking lot, which again has been approved uh, uh, in the form of a special permit amendment. So Eric can speak uh, to some of the layout and the plans that we uh, have for that. Uh, but I think that's the basic overview on our end and your staff report uh, reflects the same and I think had good substance and a, a review for us. All right, thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, okay, Eric, go ahead, please. I'm gonna share my screen just briefly, um, just to kind of walk through the plans a little bit. Can everybody see my screen? Yep. Yes. Okay, so just as a refresher, I know you're all probably very familiar with this, but this is the site of the old Webster Bank building here. Um, this is Quincy Street over here and Center Street up here. There's a signalized intersection right here where my mouse is. Um, in the existing conditions plan, we have uh, quite a few parking stalls on this site. Um, blah, 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 blah. I know I have a number somewhere, but it, it, let's call it close to a total of 30 parking stalls on the site in the existing conditions. Um, when this was approved previously, there was a line that ran roughly right through here along this island. It was the zoning line 
Um, this back portion was residential, this front portion was commercial. So by our ZBA decision for the special permit, we weren't allowed to use the back portion. I think when we came forward for site plan review, we were all in agreement, staff included, that that obviously isn't a ideal situation. One, it's simply inefficient because it takes up half of our parking stalls that we can't use. Uh, but almost more importantly, it creates just a dead lot with it would have been fenced off on this side here and this entrance would have been barricaded. So there was a lot of concern that this would just turn into a dumping site for the neighborhood for lack of a better word. Um, so I think the removal of that restriction, the rezoning of this back portion really opens up an opportunity uh, a, to let the site function as it should and as it's intended to, uh, and B, to eliminate what's a potential hazard, um, just having a dead lot that you can't really be utilized in any way, shape, or form. Um, so we have changed a little bit about the site only in our traffic patterns. Um, as it was proposed before, there would have been a fence that ran right across where my cursor is now. Uh, so this was all just one-way traffic coming around the site here. We've been able to open that up a little bit to allow two-way traffic to come through here because we have the width that we need. Um, and we obviously have two-way traffic out of this curb cut here as is ex existing now. Um, the only other thing to really know is we revised our truck turning radius just to show that the fire engine can make it all the way through the site and back out on the Quincy Street if it needs to. Um, and it can make this turn here um, to get back out to Quincy Street and access the back of the building. So really, that's it. I know you guys have had a long meeting. I won't drone on for too long. All right, I just have one quick question. So uh, uh, Mr. Diaz, so you, you, you were compliant with parking before the addition of this second lot, right? That's correct, yes. Um, if we isolate just this portion up front here, we do comply with the parking that we need. So in essence, back here is a bonus under the bylaw, but really for our practical purposes, it's probably gonna be well utilized. Oh, that's good. And the other thing I was, I think I was at on the zoning meeting on this when it first came through, I was concerned that because of that, the enforcement of that the zoning district boundary line, this thing was going to be, uh, you know, fenced off and it was going to be a no man's land. And now, now it's a functioning part of the project. So. Sure. Yep. That's all I have. Board members, any other, any other comments? I just think, um, Mr. Diaz is probably happy that this hopefully is the last time he's in front of us for this. Uh, we've just seen this so many times. Um, I'm 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 happy that everything worked out well, and I'm 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 glad I'm happy for the petitioner that uh, that they were able to uh, get the zoning change. Well, the good I guess the good news is that each time we've seen it, it's it's just gotten better and better. So, yeah, it's 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 a, it's a very it's a it's a functional site. So. Uh, any other comments on part of the board members? Okay, this being a public hearing, Rob, do you recognize anybody that wishes to speak? If if anybody wishes to speak, um, please raise your hand. I can move you over. And I do not see anyone raising their hand at this time. Wonderful, thank you. Can I get a motion to to uh, to approve the amended site motion plan? To approve. The amended site plan. Is there a second? I'll second that. Roll call vote. Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Reggie Thomas? Yes. Greg Pina? Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you all for your time. We appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you all. Okay, next agenda item, number seven, the site plan approval retail marijuana properties at 156 Main Street. Representative is attorney James uh, Valeriano. And it, it's, I guess, the, the, the project uh, participants are, uh, petitioners are the Mensing Group. Who is, who is it here representing that, please? He's got a hand up. Yep, I, I just moved him and I think the, I thought I saw the applicant, the proponent, but I don't see him now. Good evening. Can you hear me okay? Yes, Jim. Thank you, Rob. Uh, yes, uh, <clears throat> we should have representatives of Elevation Inc. They are the applicant, uh, Victor Texera and Jose Andre, the principals of the company on with us. I'm moving them up now. Thank you. 
Is there anybody else on your presentation team? No, just uh, myself and uh, Jose and Victor. All right. We're good. All right. Would someone like to, who's, who would be the representative that's going to make a presentation? That would be me, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you. Good evening to the board. I'd like to thank uh, Rob and Pam and Raysa on their efforts to re review and process our application for tonight's meeting. My name is Jim Valariani. I'm with the Mensing Law Group. Uh, our firm uh, has a focus on permitting at the municipal and state level for marijuana uh, establishments, uh, any type of establishment. And we're working with Elevation Inc. here in Brockton for their proposed location for an adult use retail dispensary at 156 Main Street. Victor Texera is the president of the company. He's a Brockton resident. He's uh, owned businesses in Brockton. And uh, Jose Andrade is the vice president, uh, former resident of Brockton, but owns businesses in Brockton. So they've partnered together to diversify in an entrepreneurial type of way to expand their business operations. And they chose 156 Main Street as the location for their proposed retail establishment. Now, there are a number of things that are important to note about the existing site. Uh, first and foremost, it uh, was constructed in 1933. It's a classic Art Deco style building. Uh, it is listed on the Massachusetts Historic Commission's uh, Register of Historic Places. Uh, formerly a Woolworth uh, a department store was in there and then uh, the Rom Jewelry Company for a number of years. Uh, it is listed as a property that is designated for rehabilitation in the city's downtown Brockton urban revitalization plan of 2016. So this is an opportunity for a new company that we uh, fully expect would be doing quite well at this location downtown to help revitalize this building. And perhaps that could lead to other tenancies. Perhaps it could lead to some grant uh, applications uh, to the city or state to help to revitalize the building, rehabilitate the building. Um, the two buildings adjoining are an old hotel and uh, an old uh, clothing store. Those were constructed in the 1920s. So for the past 90 to 100 years, this building has been in its current state. It occupies the entire 4,722 square feet of the lot. Uh, there's no parking available. Uh, no parking is required in your central business zone. There is no loading uh, available, but if it were not a pre-existing non-conforming building, only one loading berth would be required. But given the deliveries, the patronage, the employee access to this building for the past 90 or so years, um, we're not changing anything. We have plenty of parking along Main Street, West Elm, we identify on our site plan, which I will attempt to share in just a few minutes, um, the proximity of the public parking that's available. We're a little over 500 feet from the Lincoln Street metered lot and just under 400 feet from the Crescent Street parking garage. Our employees would park at the garage for long-term use. Patrons would be in the downtown area uh, as they may be on any given day, could park on the street, could park in the short-term metered parking. So there's no concerns with parking. It's not required. Uh, what is required is that we be on the second floor of this building. Now the city zoning ordinance, the C3 districts requires that retail marijuana shops not be located on the ground floor. We're going to locate on the second floor, occupy 2,269 square feet, which is much less than the 5,000 uh, square foot cap under your ordinance. So what we have is a situation where in, in the city of Brockton, downtown in particular, you have a large number of buildings with no parking that are built out fully onto the property uh, lot lines. It's been that way like any urban setting. Uh, I grew up in the city of Medford. There's a large block of buildings in the city of Medford that are built out on the property lines. Many of them host banks, uh, jewelry companies, uh, where no parking is available. So deliveries are made. 
uh, to the front of these uh, properties. Uh, and uh, with the marijuana establishment, it would be done so in a very coordinated, secretive effort with the delivery of the product to the shop two to three times a week. Uh, they could either park on Main Street, they could park in the nearby garage. Uh, product is delivered in secure cases. It's done very quickly and there's no concerns. Uh, even with the Cannabis Control Commission that offsite parking be required for any deliveries or parking to a marijuana establishment. So on the one hand, our feeling is and our, our, our elevation, uh, Victor and Jose, pursuing what the city's ordinance not just requires, but encourages to come to the downtown area, be on the second floor. And so we've done that. But in the process of doing so, we did uh, receive a number of questions over parking, uh, over waste disposal. And uh, we, there are no issues with that. There hasn't been with these properties for 90 years. There are not now. Uh, waste disposal would involve cardboard boxes, plastic, food refuse from employees on site, just like with the other offices that are located in the building. A product would be strictly inventory. There would be no waste of product. It's too expensive. They would make sure it's strictly controlled and sold and reordered. Uh, any product that is delivered is in completely sealed packages. Uh, if it does expire, it will be destroyed on site with two witnesses as required by the Cannabis Control Commission. And it would be disposed of with an organic, an organic mix that renders it unusable. So it would be disposed of with the regular trash. We did indicate to the Tech Review Committee we would coordinate the removal of trash from this building with the other tenants, weekly trash, the, 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 any marijuana waste, which again, we expect none would be stored in a, in a safe space inside our retail premises. Regular trash would likely be stored in the basement and we would work with the owner to coordinate our trash removal as has been done with the other tenants in this building, um, again, for many, many years. So it is the, the nature of the building, it's downtown, it's urban and uh, we're looking to revitalize it. It's a, it's a fantastic building and it needs revitalization. It is having a hard time, certainly with COVID, but in attracting tenants to downtown and the city would like to see that happen. Um, I'd like to bring up the site plan as uh, that is what uh, it was required. We were hoping when we first filed back in September that our architectural plans that did show a, a locus would be sufficient. It was not, we resubmitted the site plan if I may try and share, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> forgive me if I have trouble. May I, Mr. Chairman, go ahead and share that site plan? Please, yeah. Okay. Okay, is that visible? It's not a plan. I'm sorry, you're not seeing the plan? Oh, uh, we see your files. Okay, bear with me. that uh, that looks like your cover sheet to your definitive site set yes this is our our site plan there isn't uh without uh, uh, uh being a, a glib there isn't much of a site plan for us to show in connection with this project since the building does take up the entire lot so this is just our locus plan on the on the top here is the site is this uh, large enough to view can you can you expand that a little please sir Okay, so here we are. Yeah. Protentus Plaza, 
the corner of uh, Main and East Elm, which uh, converts to a VFW Parkway. Uh, 4,722 uh, square feet is, this is the surrounding building built in the 1920s, a nearby building also built in the 1920s. We show municipal spaces available on Main, over on West Elm and further down here on Main. Uh, we show the nearby Lincoln and School Street public parking area. Yeah. And we show the parking garage, which is a block away where our employees would park. So uh, no problems with parking, plenty of it. Couldn't yeah. ask for a better location in terms of proximity of parking. And we expect uh, residents and visitors who are already in the downtown Brockton area to visit the location. And that's what we hope and expect. Okay. And uh, if I may go to, we just on this show, our radius map, one of the radi uh, radius uh, items I'd like to show is again, 524 feet to the Lincoln Street lot, 380 feet to the far side of the garage, a yep. 500 foot radius, which indicates there are no schools and no other uh, retail establishments within this 500 square foot area. Okay. So we meet those requirements of your ordinance. And then this is finally just the fourth sheet that the uh, site plan engineer, uh, North Country had shown, just showing the nearest schools and the travel ways that would be to them. I don't know why that was even shown, but that's all that is. So that's our site plan, it's very basic. Our architectural plans uh, show more detail about the interior space and the facade. Would you like me to bring those up now, Mr. Chairman? Um, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that that would be unless only if in the interest of uh, the lateness of the hour, um, because it has been a fairly lengthy meeting. If you think there's a benefit to showing the interiors, otherwise we, we could maybe possibly dispense with that, sir. Well, because um, I, I do have some, the board does have some comments and concerns that we did want to share. Oh, I'm, so, no, Mr. Chairman, if I may, if that is regarding the uh, planning department's uh, board staff report, which I received two hours before the meeting, that's why I'd like to show the architectural plans because I was honestly a little bit dismayed at, at receiving that and, and seeing uh, these very uh, minor comments raised. I know the elevator and its condition has been a concern to planning and it was at zoning. The chairman of the zoning board made it known that it hadn't been inspected for five years. But uh, we're understanding it's an operational elevator and it must be made operational and inspected uh, before we can get a use and occupancy permit. It's a, it's a, a building code related item. Uh, in addition, we're going to be venting our exhaust up to the roof and to do invasive exploratory a review of an old building like that for what again is a is a building and electrical code related item were deemed uh, not appropriate or within the jurisdiction of uh, of this uh, of this planning board which is a land use uh, uh, board uh, and on waste disposal there is no disposal of any marijuana waste uh, very little if at all and we're going to coordinate our waste removal uh, with the other tenants. So it will not be uh, left out on the street. Uh, we'll work closely with that and would expect a very uh, strict condition on that. And uh, our secondary power source, that was shown on our revised plan. So I don't, I guess there's a little bit of confusion, perhaps uh, 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 an older set of plans was looked at or submitted, but we did submit revised plans to show uh, all of this. And I, if I can bring it up on the architectural as I can establish that, I don't think I should have to. Uh, we did submit on November 5th uh, uh, an email to the uh, public health department prior to tech review indicating how our waste removal would be coordinated and indicating we're in compliance with the CCC regs. We did not get a response, but uh, the uh, uh, public health uh, representative was on tech review and reiterated that. The waste removal requirement to be reviewed by TP, uh, DPH does not have to require prior to this site plan review meeting. We have to do it and we will do it, but there's no waste removal. 
uh, odor control. We're putting in a carbon filtration system. The packaging is completely sealed, remains sealed, and is sold sealed. There are no odors associated with these retail establishments. We could have gotten away with sticking a couple of air purifier systems into that space. And the applicants chose to put in uh, a, a fan system that would exhaust uh, the air without odor up to the roof with a, a mechanical fan unit up on the roof. And there's a parapet up there, it will not be visible. And that will be specced out and, and made part of the building application process when, when the architect does more detailed plans and wiring schematics and the contractor is hired and we go to the building department. So uh, we meet all of the requirements uh, for this use at this location and again, on the one hand, the city invites, requires 25% of applications, uh, licenses be downtown. Here we are smack dab downtown, trying to utilize a, a prominent uh, prime real estate building. And uh, it, it, the challenges are pre-existing as that is the case with many of the other buildings in the downtown area. So. Uh, we see no issues. We wouldn't have pursued the building if we thought there were any. There are no Cannabis Control Commission restrictions on uh, a property uh, uh, fronting the street with no parking or loading, none whatsoever. Uh, and uh, we uh, want to make sure we entertain any questions that this board has because we are fully anticipating. I, I went into this meeting fully anticipating that we would have a favorable result and to read the, the planning department's recommendation for a denial on such minor issues was a bit dismaying. And I okay, address me, those. If I may, maybe I can, I don't mean to, I don't mean to uh, interrupt you, sir, but uh, maybe I can, um, let's see. Um, Okay, but let's just go down this, this to, in my, you know, fr from our perspective or my perspective as chairman of the board, I'm looking at, I'm looking at, and we'll certainly entertain comments on the part of the board members and you can rebut some of these, but I'm looking at two sets of concerns. Uh, one is the, the, one was the, one was the, the list of, um, uh, the list of issues that were brought up at the November 30th uh, tech review meeting uh, that are listed in the planning department's comments. You have those four bullet items there, I assume, sir, right? Yes. I mean, you just, and not to be repetitive, but you just address some, address some of those. Now, my understanding, uh, someone uh, from the planning department can jump in and correct me if I make a mistake here, but it looked, it looked, it looks to me, let's break it down into, into, into sections here. It looks to me that as a, as a, as a result of your tech review meeting that the that the tech review, the tech review was looking for a waste trash removal plan, uh, not not your intentions, but some sort of a waste trash removal plan. I don't know if that's tied to the city or the state marijuana ordinance. I don't know, but specifications for the odor exhaust through the through the roof through a, through a roof plan. Identify and the secondary power source for the site on the site plan, and the ele elevator is not ADA compliant. It needs to be brought into compliance. I mean. It's it's and I appreciate your telling us that that the applicant uh, is going to going forward is going to take care of those. But generally, when we have issues like that on a site plan approval that that are that are not addressed, it's a concern. This being the approval process for the site plan, you can understand it's a concern at this stage. And then the second set of concerns. Um, We've got concerns about uh, offloading, and that you've made your, your point well that because it's C3, there's no parking required, at least in our ordinance. But I can ask the question it, it, uh, Does the Maro lo the City of Brockton's marijuana ordinance, or does the Commonwealth of Mass marijuana regulations require off street parking? I don't know the answer to that. No. Okay. All right. What about, what about loading, off street loading? I mean, parking is different from loading. No, not required. We can do it from the street. We can do it by parking in the garage and 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 wheeling it over if necessary. But we would uh, seek to coordinate our deliveries of product randomly, quickly. I can tell you, 
I reviewed this board's uh, December meeting with uh, uh, Atlantic Medicinal Partners down at 4 Main Street. They happen to be on the ground floor. They may not be at the street level, but they're on the ground floor in the rear and they got approved. We went up on the second floor, which is what we were understood to be the requirement. Uh, they indicated their deliveries would be right on Main Street in and out within a minute or two. Okay. And, and that's what we'll be doing as well. All right. And then, so back to the set of comments that, that, that you that you got from Tech Review. I don't mean to belabor this, but, and I understand your, your response is going forward, but what about a non-compliant uh, elevator? That's correct. We have an elevator. It's, it's, see, your ordinance requires that retail establishments be ADA compliant. Now, in order to bring this up to ADA compliance, we need to bring in an elevator contractor and find out an elevator engineering company, find out if any upgrades or repairs are necessary, and then call in the state elevator inspector to do an inspection and make sure it's adequate for passenger use. Any repairs, any upgrades, any costs required with that would be uh, 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 outlaid during the construction process. So we can get a use and occupancy permit. We can not get a final inspection or a final license from the Cannabis Control Commission unless that, op that elevator is working to support passengers and be ADA compliant. But that is a construction related item. Okay, have you had... Have you had have you had a company? I'm just curious, sir. Have you had a company come in and evaluate the the, the existing elevator as it is now? We have not done that yet. We were informed by the property owner that it is working. Uh, apparently, there's some uh, struggles with the uh, uh, upkeep of the building. I I know that a tech review uh, concerns were raised on old signage that is deteriorating, a protruding sign that looks like it's no longer in use and therefore is likely abandoned. We indicated we would cooperate to have that removed during our installation process. And we would do the same with the elevator uh, as well. So we're trying to get through this process and, 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 and get the land use, not construction approvals, but land use approvals. We did get our ZBA approval. Those issues were raised as well. And uh, we obtained that approval uh, by a vote of uh, uh, four to one. Uh, and there were no appeals to our, our decision. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, any concerns on the part of the other board members? I'm, I'm a little, I, I've got to, I've got to admit, I'm a little um, puzzled and a little troubled at the concerns brought up. Um, with, this is the only application that actually follows the intent, from what I understand, of the ordinance of being on the second floor, on, not on the ground floor. Uh, the one we approved early, last month doesn't really um, fit the intent of what we wanted. But this is the only application we've seen that fits the intent of what we want. You know, an elevator, I mean, why, why, we, why are we asking someone to go to the expense of having an, an elevator inspected and repaired and improved uh, on a building they don't own that hasn't been approved yet? Um, I think that's an unreasonable request. And um, in order to get an occupancy permit, they kind of need to have an operating elevator. Um, that's, that's, that's common sense. I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm just a little troubled and puzzled um, that we would actually have a, re, a, a re recommendation to deny this when I don't see any reason to deny it. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm confused myself to be quite honest with you, Mr. Pina. Uh, I, I, and I certainly don't want us as a board to exceed our authority. I'm kind of like learning as I go to be quite honest with you. I wanna make sure that, we, that we're procedurally correct, but I, I don't want to exceed our authority. So if someone from the planning department wants to assist the board in, in helping view this, that would be that might be helpful if you if you would care to. Bryce, you're up. You there? Hello? Bryce? We lose her? Uh, no, she, um, I don't yeah, see her on there. Her, her computer was, uh, having battery problems. I'm sorry. Uh, I just got a text from her. Okay. The issues 
that um, we're dealing with is that these items are all um, requirements of the site plan approval process in the zoning ordinance. And so that is why we have documented that we did not have a, a, a waste plan. And that's, and we're not talking about the marijuana waste, but the regular, uh, oh, I'm sorry, my camera's off. Um, the regular uh, materials, uh, the building has a history and I realize this is not the tenant's problem or, or the applicant's problem. The building has a history of of leaving trash on the street or trying to cram it into um, uh, the public receptacles outside. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that they had an agreement with someone who would make sure that that um, garbage got picked up. Uh, with regard to odor control, I do realize, and we all realize that the um, uh, packets that are coming in are going to be completely sealed, um, but we, and you show a odor control plan or a venting plan, but there are specifications for the um, outside of that plan that have not been shown. Um, I am not aware of a revised plan that shows the, the secondary power source. You had mentioned batteries. I don't know where that's going to be. Um, a battery backup system may um, uh, need some special consideration from our fire department. Um, uh, elevator, um, the elevator does need to be operational when you open. Um, it is probably something that the board can look at if the board wants to do um, a, a conditional uh, or, or at least make a note that it needs to be uh, operational before it can um, uh, the tenant or the applicant open operations. So those are my comments. Okay. Does the uh, does the to the to the planning department does the does the planning department or the building department at this point now have site plan. I know that we have obviously we have had long time site plan approval. Do we have site plan as built? Is there somehow that we that we sign off on a site plan? Yes. So we could do we in other words to do a conditional approval. I guess every all parties are acknowledging the deficiencies that were noted in the tech review. So it's 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 possible to do a conditional approval. It is yes. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, sir. Please, uh, thank you. I do want to note that we did show the uninterrupted power supply, which has to be for a minimum of four hours on our security plans inside uh, uh, the security area. Now, the security plans aren't shown uh, in a public setting to uh, not compromise the integrity of those plans, but they were shared with the planning staff and the police department. Captain LaFrance did approve our plans. We did un in, uh, add the uninterrupted power supply uh, a, a battery rack system could easily go in the basement as well, but we did uh, have it shown in the security plans within the premises. Uh, we did include uh, my memo to the public health department and on the waste removal, I addressed it in my nine page single space narrative as well. We will coordinate. There's Would you be able to send that to us? Because we have made multiple inquiries at the Board of Health. And I, I, it was included. It was okay. included in my filing, my 78 page filing. Well, uh, that's probably, a, you know, 78 pages of one document. <laughs> I know it, but I will say we have found it quite frankly, uh, somewhat uh, interesting how much this location has been challenged. It's a, it's a good location. We're trying to revitalize there. There's a scramble for final licenses in the city. And as this uh, board, I'm sure knows, the city council threw up his hands in December and tabled all licenses. Yep. And is Mr. going to Superior Court for declaratory judgment. So we believe there's room for another Mr. license. Chairman? Yes, sir. Um, I do want to confirm that there is on the security plan um, uh, the uninterrupted power supply. 
uh, is, is on the document. All right, so one by one, we're eliminating this. This is good stuff. So thank you for bringing that to my attention. So what's left on the punch list here? Do you, I mean, as small as it might be, uh, they're asking- The elevator, the odor control, so I, uh, and uh, trash, trash, trash and, removal. Yeah, and as of today, the Board of Health tells us that they got nothing, so. Well, <laughs> I, uh, I I must say, I did email that showing compliance uh, and consistency with the Cannabis Control Commission regs and how it would be disposed of. But again, there's no dumpster on site. If, if, if tenants are dumping their trash in the receptacles on the street or leaving them outside, I know the DPW rep mentioned that he didn't like to see that, especially over weekends where it would stay. We'll work well, with the owner. To, to he's supposed to have a disposal company. Right. Track. So we will have to have that. And we have no problem with coordinating other tenants trash with our uh, disposal efforts. It has to happen. And uh, but again, uh, the DPH uh, uh, review of waste management uh, is something that can be done after this uh, hearing process, but we have addressed it. Uh, I do see that in your application, your revised application, that you will re uh, you will coordinate that with um, the tenant. Yeah, we don't um, know what else we can do. I don't know. Can you make those conditions of approval? There are standard conditions that come with a marijuana retail establishment. We that, would anticipate that. That if, if that just, is the board's pleasure. I'm just I'm just concerned that we're involving ourselves. I mean, these are strictly regulated by the Cannabis Control Commission, and we're we're looking at at elevator items that they need a, they they need a working elevator to comply with ADA and uh, to get an occupancy permit. Why are we even looking at that right now when we're just in a preliminary phase when they have a lot of other boards to go through? Because unfortunately, it's part of the regulation that says. This is this is this is the compliant. only application we've gotten that actually fits what the spirit of the ordinance that we had passed. For well, it's the only the application that we've received on an upper floor, and so I'm 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 curious why 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 what are the what are the issues? With I, I still don't see any major issues um, that that aren't regulated by Cannabis Control Commission or the Building Department requiring an I mean. ADA well, the, I, I think it's not that, it, that there are problems, Craig, it's that the ordinance when it was written said they must submit this information to you as a board. And that's where that's that's the that's, that's the issue. So it, it's it's up to the board. The board can you, you can make the. Well, it, I mean, the ordinance requires that they APA. get a, you know, that the elevator passes inspection. And right, right. It can all be worded. Your right. ordinance requires ADA compliance. It, uh, no different than it, it requires you to be in a particular zone. It's part of the law. We can't avoid it. it, it right. But it, it has to be addressed through the, the building uh, application process after engineers and contractors mm -hmm. bid, uh, bid the project and apply for the permit. So, Mr. Villariani, uh, I just, so, who, who, what agency is it that actually signs off on the updated and, and approved elevator? Who does that? Okay, so that would have to, there'd have to be uh, a, a sign off by the, the state elevator inspector's office. Uh, I don't know where it is for Plymouth County. I think they have offices nearby in Milford. Um, it would need a, a final use and occupancy uh, inspection by the building department. And then finally, the Cannabis Control Commission comes in with a set of the uh, building plans, and they do a walkthrough to make sure all security, all build out is built according to the architectural plans that we have to submit to the CCC in advance as well. So there's, there's three levels of approval there, the state elevator inspector, nothing's going to pass them without uh, uh, being completely compliant. The building department, and I wouldn't be surprised if a peer review engineer is uh, required during the build out of this, and that would be fine. And the Cannabis Control Commission's final inspection as well. So yeah, three more levels uh, after this hearing and after if we're fortunate enough to get a, a license from the city council. Okay. 
Um, well, um, it, it, it's, it, it is somewhat of a little bit of a catch 22. And again, I, are there any other comments on the part of the board? Uh, any other comments or concerns on the part of the planning department? No. Okay. If someone, I mean, I'll throw this suggestion out there. Does someone, uh, if this is all, if it's all self-regulating, if it's all going to take care of itself, does someone want to make a motion? Um, Mr. Chairman, this is a public hearing. Does someone want to make a motion? This is a public hearing. I'm sorry. We, need to take this, we do need to take testimony. Oh, I'm sorry. Pardon me. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Yes, this is a public hearing. Pardon me. Did you recognize uh, Mr. May or Pam as anybody that wants to speak at, a, at this public hearing? Um, there is a gentleman named Bob, and if Bob could identify himself, um, he has been uh, providing some comments in the chat section. Um, and then there uh, may be other folks if you are interested in providing testimony, if you would raise your hand and we can move you into the uh, panelist section so you can speak. So Bob, um, if you would like to unmute. to unmute uh, in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. Is he indicating uh, that he wants to be recognized? He had his well, hand he, up. He had his hand up and he had a lot of comment in the chat, which unfortunately does not get... Um, he just said his microphone or his phone isn't working. Oh. I see that now. So I can read what he's written in the chat. Uh, Do you have his name? I don't know his name. Bob, could you uh, type in your first and last name and um, uh, your address? Bob Lewis. Okay, thank you. Okay. So the CCC, uh, requ whoops, the CCC requires uh, a secure, secure loading and handicap access to the unit. This has not been, the elevator has not been inspected since 2016. Uh, people are using this elevator in violation of state law uh, and there is no secured loading. Uh, I am an abutter and co and concerned um, with this being here, uh, being there. Uh, this is an additional tenant that is going into a troubled building. The original odor control plan was thrown out uh, in front of the building. Uh, our batteries, our, our explosive batteries being uh, stored in the building. Um, I cannot find the UPS drive. It's on the security plan. It doesn't need to be made public. Um, that, that last half of my answering that question. And uh, they're required to have trash removal with a license trash hauler. Um, site plan review for cannabis business requires these items in the application. And that is from Bob Lewis in 148 Main Street. So um, we have the elevator issue, we have the odor control issue, we have the battery issue. Um, but I think the most important thing is hanging out there is secured um, loading and what secured loading air quotes actually means is um, anybody's guess you know is it a sally port that you drive into um, none of our cannabis operations have that kind of situation is it uh, a vehicle pulls over and there is a security guard that uh, monitors the material coming in and out. That's what most of our other cannabis operations are doing. Um, that is correct. And Mr. May, we well, do like show on our architecture. I'm, I, 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 oh, I'd yeah. like it. I would like an opportunity to make sure I respond to everything before. Oh, the please do. Please do. 
Well, on our architectural plans, we do show the two security guards, one at the uh, first floor level. The main entrance for the adult dispensary would be on East Elm, where the elevator is, security located there, an additional security guard uh, inside uh, the second floor security booth where IDs are checked, separate entrance, separate exit. We would expect customers in there for about 10 minutes, eight or 10 customers at a time at most during the busiest times. Uh, we've indicated it's pre-existing building, 1933, no loading, no parking, uh, not required for parking. Loading, if it were new construction, would have been one berth for uh, this operation. Uh, we'll be dealing with our trash removal the same way it's been dealt with for 90 years. We'll coordinate with the other tenants and the owner. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 how else can you uh, remove trash? I mean, it'll be stored in the basement. Our trash will be stored on the premises and we'll make sure we work very closely with the owner. If it's a condition of this site plan, then there is an enforcement mechanism there, but there's also an enforcement mechanism by the Department of Public Health or the building department with enforcement actions if they deem necessary. So, you know, we're not going into this uh, in any way thinking that it's not going to be highly regulated and highly scrutinized and reviewed, especially over the first year or two. Uh, the elevator uh, will be uh, have to be made code compliant, ADA compliant, uh, and there's no requirement in the CCC regs for offsite loading or parking. So there is none regarding in the CCC no. regs. No. Okay. And I, uh, I, 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 the owner yeah, control yeah. is is is. Uh, is uh, overkill for what we're doing. A couple of air purifying units would have been sufficient with the packaging being uh, sealed. But we're putting in the carbon filtration fan system routed through the interior of the building with a small air handling unit on top, uh, which will not be visible from the street level given the short parapet wall. Typical uh, fan system on any commercial building. Uh, so uh, you know, that'll be spec'd out and dealt with by the building department as well. Well, I, I mean, it would seem as though we're, I mean, we're getting mired down in, uh, in some catch-22 issues here. I mean, I think that um, each issue we raise, it, it seems as though it, it defaults to, a, to a, a higher level of inspection, a higher level of approval from a different agency. So again, I, I want to be careful that this board doesn't exceed its authority by imparting to this applicant uh, conditions that we don't have the right to do. But I, but at the same time, I want to be compliant with what our own site plan regulations require. So I wish I, I wish I had a firmer grip on. I go, I'm not I'm not terribly versed in marijuana regulations. But um, well, what's the pleasure of the board? And what what is the, any other comments on the part of the board? I mean, we could. We, I suppose okay. we could. Mr. I mean, Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, if, if I may, in, in listening to the presentation and and finding the uh, items that, that um, uh, Mr. Valeri, Valerian? Valeriari. So, thank you, sorry, I screwed that up. Um, has addressed, I think we've addressed most of those that are what we consider um, uh, could be um, uh, conditional in the, in the approval, because obviously it, it it needs the Board of Health, it needs the inspection of the elevator. Um, for the most part, uh, he is right. They are systems uh, with regard to the air handling. Uh, security plans do show uh, sufficient uh, detail and uh, I'm, I'm comfortable with, with a conditional um, approval. Okay. And given the, given the fact that that everything requires approval approval from other authorities, I'd like to make a motion to approve with the standard conditions. Uh, I'm going to second that motion. How do we? Uh, just a quick question. So, how do we incorporate the conditional the, the conditional items? The standard conditions. What are, what other conditional items are there? Well, uh, the the uh, the um, the planning the planning the planning department had suggested a conditional approval at at opening the the elevator needs to be that that well but my with, with my motion that i mean it recognizes the fact that the elevator needs to be ada compliant before before even opening 
and it needs to be ADA compliant before they even get an occupancy permit. I don't think it's within, within our authority to approve anything on condition of the elevator. I think that that's that's a total total different total different scope of uh, scope of authority. That's why I made that's why I, I made the motion just for standard conditions. Mm -hmm. Comments, please. Are we good with that? And Reggie seconded that, I believe. Okay, so I did. I did. Roll call. Okay, so we have a motion to approve with a second. Uh, let's go to a roll call vote. Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Reggie Thomas? Yes. Craig Pina? Yes. And Bob Pelagi is a yes. Thank you very much. Thank I know you. it's been a long night, and uh, I hope it moves uh, quickly for you for the remainder. And I appreciate you listening to this long presentation. And uh, I know it uh, was a, a challenging site, but it's a, it's a fantastic site. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Rob and Pam. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you all. For the Good evening. Can we go I'm forward, good. Rob? Move to adjourn. Got one you just leave Scott there. <laughs> yeah, just leave him there. Scott can come back another day. Thanks a lot, Rob. Appreciate it. All right. Let's go. So last night in the site plan approval, retail marijuana properties at 165 Westgate Drive. Representative is Scott Ferry of J.K. Holmgren. Good evening, Scott. Thank you for not taking the planner's advice, Mr. Pelagic. <laughs> uh, what I have a, a quick, easy site plan approval for retail marijuana at 165 Westgate, uh, we were before tech review a year ago, December of 2019. And uh, there was a relatively small list of items uh, that the committee had for, for comments. Uh, as you know, the, the site 165 Westgate Drive, it's an existing building, uh, existing commercial property on Westgate Drive, parking in the front, kind of on either side of the, uh, of the building. Uh, has a bunch of existing buildings. There's been medical supplies, h and Block, uh, physical fitness. Uh, there's a military recruiting office there as well. Uh, we're looking at uh, using up about 2,600 square feet of the building for the, uh, for the marijuana use. Uh, the changes that were discussed at Tech Review, uh, as I said, they're kind of small. One was adding a new fence around the dumpster area, which we've done. Uh, the one that's there now is uh, in a little bit of, of rough shape. Uh, we added an emergency generator to the rear of the building, and we eliminated the note uh, that somebody brought up at Tech Review about the construction entrance. Uh, and eliminating that note, we had a, a standard note about a construction entrance. In this case, we uh, didn't need it. Uh, in addition to that, we've made one other change that really wasn't discussed at Tech Review, but we looked at it and figured it might uh, help things a little bit. We've added uh, some green space in front of the building. We eliminated four parking spaces. We had, I don't know, about 10 extra spaces on the property. And realistically, anytime you go there, there's the, the parking lot's never full. So uh, by zoning, we had 10 extra spaces. We figured we could take four of them out and put in a landscaped island uh, right there in the middle. So we've done that. So that's the other uh, significant change that we've made. And uh, just on our property with our square footage uh, for our use, we're required to have 12 parking spaces and we've provided 13. So that is the down and dirty version, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you for that. Um, any comments on the part of the board? Isn't this the, uh, I mean, this is, I think this site was the, the very first application we, we heard. Of it would have been the first one you heard at the zoning board. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was a while ago. Yep. Uh, Mr. May, do we recognize anybody that wants to be heard? Uh, are there anybody who would like to be elevated to panelists to discuss? Yeah, I, I would. This is back on there. Oh, uh, oh man. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you kept me up this long. <laughs> this is way past his bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> I Eric, just, uh, I'm you're joining the group. Um, but Phil, if you want to go first, and uh, Eric, yes. will be um, Eric Holstein is one of the principals of the business. 
who, who may or may not speak, but uh, just for a little expanded background, the site has a total of 250 parking spots. Even though we said we're dedicating 13, there are 250 available. So it's probably the only proposed site in the city with the most parking spots and the most access and egress. In addition, um, Mr. Holstein and Anthony Apple, who are the principals, uh, just a background on their uh, management style because we have all types of applicants looking for licenses. These two guys both graduated with business degrees, one from Harvard, one for Cornell, and they uh, were uh, consultants for Price Waterhouse. Mr. Ackle had developed 80 restaurants that are all successful and was named executive of the year. And he built out 80 restaurants. They're called Be Good. They're throughout the city of Boston, throughout all the uh, various shopping plazas. And um, they've basically gone from Maine down to North Carolina, and, and several of them are in Europe business to develop a property and to do it with high efficiency, high level, and uh, bring uh, credit to the area. And I think that's what Brockton is looking for, should be looking for, not only the type of business, but who's running the business. What is, what's their experience? What do they bring to the table? Uh, I think it's a golden team. And uh, because I have an interest in the real estate, I was very, very particular on what was going there and who was developing it. Because you know, you can bring anything anywhere, but if you don't have the right jockey on the horse, you're not gonna win the race. You're not gonna be able to handle it properly. So I'm, I'm very enthusiastic guys operating uh, the business. They've also been in the city of Brockton looking at opportunity zones, development in real estate and managing businesses is their forte. And I think at this facility, uh, it will be a credit to the city, a benefit to the city and I know they will operate and do the right job. And uh, so I just wanted to, I think it was important for the board to know who the people are but so, along with the entity and the proposal of the business. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nusro. Um, Would anyone else like to speak? Mr. Holstein or uh, I have uh, two Patels, uh, Ian Wood, a Hallie Lasso, Bob Keane, and Milt uh, in the attendees section. If they would like to speak, please raise your hand. I think they're just listening. Okay. And I, I will, I think Phil spoke much more highly of me than I would ever be able to. So I think I will uh, just defer uh, <laughs> to, to, to you guys on that. And so I'll, I'll pass this to you. Okay, I'd let you, uh, let you go on that. All right, so you're not recognizing anybody that wishes to speak from the public, Rob? I don't see anybody raising their hand. Okay, wonderful. I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. Do, do any of the board members have any other further concerns? I just, I just have a point. I mean, we have a lot of app applicants for the last remaining license. Um, what 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 do you see as putting you above every other applicant that's already in line? Well, um, this is historically, this goes back to when the first licenses were issued. They were issued by Mayor Carpenter to X amount of people. And it was never designed to be a horse race. It was either they could credit worthiness, their abilities and their ability to get a license. Subsequent to Mayor Cop until more license were given out, but it was never mentioned to any of the license holders of the HCAs or the HCA holders that we were now going to have a foot race to the finish. So I think that was basically the inequity and it's a problem. Um, I can tell you by firsthand knowledge as having been city solicitor, that was not the way it was designed for this to be a horse race because there's a lot of time, money, um, an effort that has to go into this and you can't tell a guy go spend 50 60 70 000, move the goalposts, change the rules of the game and say you know what you're too late if, if if it was designed that way it should have been mentioned that way so i think that's something the city is yet to grapple with and resolve i don't think uh the last the last horn has been blown on this i think that uh it's always been a process in, in progress and not a, with a final re resolution. As you can see from 
the um, uh, city council issues. Uh, there is a lot of uh, disagreement and doubt and uncertainty how they're supposed to handle this. If you've looked at the last city council meetings, it was um, almost so, and they, they were looking now for the court to help lay out what the rules are. So um, it's not set in stone. And quite frankly, I think that uh, all those who were given HCA should be entitled to get to the finish line. But if the, if the next mayor wants to open it up for 10 more, you know, somebody's got to set down the rules from the beginning. If they're going to be changed, you got to notify everybody that was part of the game at the beginning. And that didn't happen. So there are a lot of issues, legal, non-legal, that uh, are yet to be determined. Good answer. <laughs> well, it's, it's true. Look, I understand this is a new business, not only for Brockton, but throughout the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. And there was no uniformity to the regulations or the rules. But everybody was freelancing on this in, in uh, you know, shooting from the hip, and it was not the way it should have been done. I know how much we struggled when we tried to lay out the guidelines for the city council on marijuana. It was just a, um, like toss it, like playing volleyball back and forth. And to this day, there's still vagueness, uncertainty was supposed to happen. So yes, the person was given an HCA in 2018, spent two years working on a site, working on architects, engineers, lighting. Now more people were thrown in the race and it, it, there's, there's real legal issues of inequity and illegal process that's taken place. And I don't think it was fair to those who are receiving HCAs later, no more than to the ones who received it earlier. So if you're going to do that, then put them all on the same plane. Uh, because look, Brockton's a big city. Northampton has 40 licenses and you speak to the mayor there, he wishes he's had more. Brockton's worried if they got 10 or 15. It doesn't make a difference. They have Bill, 40 liquor stores. Bill, who, has, who, Bill who, did you, who did you say has 40 licenses? Uh, you said Northampton. Northampton. Oh, Northampton. Yeah. Wow. Mr. Chairman, it is now um, 9.15. Yes. Would you be interested in a uh, motion? Yeah. Yes, I certainly would. I didn't. I did, but I didn't. I didn't want to be rude and. Uh, well, and, Phil will we'll go on for an hour. He's paid by the word. <laughs> yep. All right. So I appreciate that that information. That's useful information, Mr. Nasrallah. Uh, if if there's no other input from the part of the public, I'm going to declare that portion of the hearing closed. Um, would someone like to make a motion? Motion approved. Second. I'll second the motion. Hello. Motion to approve. With I'm, I'm trying to complain about this, and nobody lets me get talk. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Lewis. We didn't rec we didn't recognize you. Pardon me. What, um, oh, yeah. We at? We we had closed that already part of the hearing. Um. Well, I guess I don't know. Do Do you have a specific? Oh, wait, he, he, yeah, please let him speak because he's been trying to raise his hand. He said okay. so. Just let him speak. A, please. Do you have a specific comment or two, Mr. Lewis? Yes, as I was trying to find out, I'm going to look at the uh, public records to find out who has the host community agreement. I don't see Mr. Holstein's name on it, anything there. Can you can you respond to that? Mr. The organization, if it's not listed on the um, HCA, it doesn't have to be. The HCA is from uh, Bedford Street in Bridgewater with a different person. That's the resident agent who yeah. receives mail or legal process. If you this look under not that a proper... name, it says resident agent. Yeah. I just want to let my neck record know that I, I'm against this, that, that the uh, this is not a proper place for it. We had this hearing years ago on when they wanted to put the medical in there. And the uh, Mr. Nasrallah used to be the city solicitor when the uh, original HCAs went out. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your input. Uh, do you have anybody else that wants to be recognized, Mr. May? Not at this time, sir. Okay, we're going to close that portion of the public hearing. We have, we have we have a motion, a valid motion, in a second, uh, which which still stands as far as I'm concerned. Okay, a roll call vote. Larry Hassan. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Reggie Thomas. Yes. Craig Pina. Yes. And Bob Pelagi is a yes. Yeah. Well, thank you, gentlemen.
And um, thank you, folks. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Scott. Thank you for Bye. your patience to all. Thank you to the board members and to the planning we department. Need a motion to adjourn. We adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank Second. you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Have a good night. See you in a couple of weeks. Thank you.